And we are back. We're back. Episode 11 in the new layout. Uh, three camera angles going, multiple light sources, new couches, bookcases, prints, paint, the whole nine. We are trying something new, ladies and gentlemen. We uh, bought all this stuff thinking that this was going to be a super effective, comfy podcast. And Too comfy. Yeah, I'm not sure. You're going to have to move your mic closer to your mouth. I'm not sure that this is going to work out as I had planned, even though I'm very comfortable now. Um, there's still a whole lot of growing pains that are going to have to get worked out. Mm -hmm. We did order other chairs just in case these didn't work, but those won't be here until March. So <clears throat> we're going to have to record over the next few days in these chairs. And by the time the other chairs come, these may be what we're used to recording in because we may have found our groove. So right. this may be the final form minus the wall behind you because you need art. Um, get that figured out. I also don't know how we're going to do live streams. Play it by ear. Yeah, we're going to have to wing it. I'm going to have to buy a tablet, whether it be a, an iPad or a Samsung tablet so that I can actually read emails with you because right now the only thing I can work with is my phone, whereas before I had an actual computer at my desk that I could operate, and I can't reach any of that from here, mm -hmm. which means we really need somebody to be able to direct when we're doing these podcasts, and until we get to the point where we can pay somebody to be here while we do this, that's not really an option. We're just finagling. Right, and we, are, we were a two-man show, and we're a four-man show now because we have AJ and Jennifer helping, but like it's still... I don't know. It's a lot. We don't need, realistically, we don't need them. Like mm -hmm. I, I could, I could do the editing that AJ is doing and make all that work, but it would be, it would be more like two more days worth of work a week. And the Jennifer helping with the emails is a big deal because I don't want to read those emails on the podcast and be caught up in some kind of DV situation or some weird sex scene because of the emails that we get. Like I don't. Right. So, um, so I don't know. I, I think uh, we have new microphones coming tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that'll be the final setup with this until we decide whether or not we're going to change the chairs. Um, I don't know what all we have today. We have, uh, I have one question from TikTok that I screenshotted that I would like to discuss. Mm -hmm. I have one bullet point I would like to hit. Okay. Do you want to do that first and then we'll get into my conversation and then we can do the emails? So I posted a clip from the podcast to my TikTok where we were talking about woman said he should be loyal no matter what. And the dude was like, loyal to what? Right. Though. And somebody commented and said, along the lines of women get mad because we're different. Sometimes we just need something different. And I commented back and I was like, do you mean other women when you say you need something different? So it sounds like. So I made a note and I said, don't get into a monogamous relationship with the mindset that every once in a while you need, need something different. Right. If you know yourself and you're going to get tired of sleeping with the same person, continue with the hookup culture with no expectations or get into a polyamorous relationship. Right. Do not get into a monogamous relationship with somebody who is dead set on spending the rest of their life with you and building something for you to go, it's eight months in, I'm bored. I'm going to go have sex with Becky. You okay with that? Right. No. You're just going to continuously hurt people. And if you're looking for validation outside of the relationship, don't get into a monogamous relationship. It's not that hard. Right. There's a lot of reasons that people would do that, though. And after eight months of being with somebody, it sounds like they could be, as you put it, the... Um, um, serial dater. Serial dater. It could be somebody that just needs attention constantly. And after eight months of being with somebody, the attention slows down because you guys fall into a routine. Right. Um, sex gets boring when it's the same way every single time. Mm -hmm. They could be unwilling to try new things. That conversation needs to happen. Well, I'll say that's a different conversation than right. I'm just going to go sleep with somebody else. Right. Absolutely. It absolutely is. And if you're feeling that way and you want to go sleep with somebody else, you need to figure out why that is. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like you said, if, if you're just not wanting to be monogamous, that's the thing. But if you do this in a pattern repeatedly over and over and over again, I don't remember what I was talking about. The hum distracted me. Not getting into a monogamous relationship <clears throat> if you want to have multiple sexual partners. Right. So in the event that you're, you, you right. So if you, if you know that you just want multiple sexual partners and don't get in that monogamous relationship, but if you get bored with somebody and you're a serial dater and you need that lust, eventually you're going to be that guy that never settled down or that woman who never settled down. Excuse me. And by then, the, the pickings are going to be mighty slim. Right. And you're not going to find a quality person because quality people are going to be married to other quality people. Mm -hmm. And they'll have found their, their life and worked it out. 
So in that scenario where you're eight months in and you feel like you need something different, you need to talk to your partner and be like, hey, right. you know, I don't know really what's going on in our sex life, but this mm-hmm. this vanilla shit's not working for me. We need to try something else. And if she's into that, great. Or he's into that, great. And if not, then maybe you need to start your next relationship with, hey, I need more than missionary. Right. So. It's also the kind of thing where if your partner comes to you and says this isn't enough and they're really pushing for the polyamorous, don't give in to that just because you want to make somebody happy. Right. You're going to destroy yourself. We get emails over that constantly. Yeah. If your partner wants to have multiple sexual partners and you are not okay with that, do not break that boundary because you love them. Right. It's going to destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. There there are people who are into that. There are people who are into three-way relationships and and actual multiple partners in a relationship Mm -hmm. and every variation of that. You just have to find somebody that meshes with that if that's what you're about. But Yeah. It's okay to be into that. Right. And it's okay to not be into that. It is never okay to break your comfort zone or your boundaries within a relationship just to make somebody else happy. Right. I agree. Is there more to that bullet point? No, that was it. The idea of being in a monogamous relationship for eight months or a year or two years and trying to to switch things into a polyamorous relationship is never going to work. No, it's not. Unless both people are completely miserable and you are financially dependent on each other. And the sex has stopped, and then you're seeking outside sources, and at that point, you're roommates. Yeah, but let's say you're just roommates at that point. Right. You're friends. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, on episode ten, we talked about. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember what what this was in regards to, but oh, this was on the video that I talked about. I love you versus love you. Mm-hmm. That that cut we did clip. Somebody said episode ten made me start thinking of what I want in a marriage. How do I date to marry, not just date? How do I explain that on first dates? And I said, oh, man, that's a conversation for a podcast, not a 150-character reply. I am making a note. We record episode 11 tomorrow. I will include this. So <clears throat> I, I don't think that that is a conversation for a first date. I think that a first date should be you seeing the way that they interact with other people, see their appearance, how they dress, how they, they, they hold themselves, if they open doors, slide chairs out, if they pay. If see the quality of their character. Right. If they're nice to servers, yada, yada, yada. I think that you can absolutely lead the conversation in that direction on a first date, but I don't think it should go into that depth because you don't, if you have a quality person, you don't want to just scare them off by going, you want 15 kids? I want to get married by next year. Like, yeah. you, you don't want that. You need to be able to ease that conversation and in trying to find out their goals and aspirations are going to be a good way to do that. If you get somebody talking about what they want out of life and they get excited and they're passionate, you know that they're goal driven, you know that they're passionate about what they're talking about and they're probably going to achieve that in life. But as they get talking, then you can start asking about family. You know, if we're 25 years old on a first date and you have a, an idea of opening a, a screen printing business where you're printing shirts for businesses and all that shit. And this is just an example. And we're at, you know, the two people are at dinner and they're having that conversation. The guy's getting excited and the chick's like, well, you know, we're 25. When do you, you know, do you want to have kids one day? Like, where does that fit into your plans? Because now you can have that conversation and you can figure that out. I think second date, third date would probably be more of a a marriage conversation to find out. But I also don't think that you should be dating people just to, to sleep with them. Yeah. If you're going on a first date, it shouldn't be to sleep with somebody. Your first date should be getting to know them. Mm. It should be seeing who they are as a person and not just an online presence. And you should be stalking them online. If you get on Facebook to and meet somebody there and you haven't gone through all their photos to see who they are and then you guys go out to eat and they don't take the time to, to dress up or make themselves more presentable and they just continue that Facebook appearance, like they haven't put any effort into your date. I mean, for me, that's a, a problem. Like, right. you know, if you're... You should be trying to, to make a, a um, an impression. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think about all that? My thoughts are, you know, if the first few dates they don't get dressed up in ten years, they're not going to get dressed up for your anniversary. If they show you that that's who they are in the first few dates, that's going to be your ten years. Right. That's something to think about. If they're rude to waiter, waiters, they're probably going to be rude to your family. Oh yeah. Those are important things to gauge. Do not start a conversation on the first date of, well, we're kind of getting up there. My clock's ticking. How do you feel about kids? <laughs> yeah. I have heard women say that. <clears throat> on a first date? On a first date. We don't do that. Yeah, that's that's insane. I agree. Hit them with, what's <clears throat> your? where do you see yourself in 10 years? If they're not goal-oriented and they're like, I work at Burger King, I'm doing pretty okay. 
I don't see where I have to improve my life. Like I'm good with just getting by. They're not going to say that they're good with just getting by, but if they give the impression of they're okay living paycheck to paycheck and they don't want to further themselves in their life, I would not plan a second date. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either. And it's not because of financial status. It's because I, I have goals and aspirations. Right. And I don't want somebody that's just going to ride my coattails. I want somebody that's going to help me build right. and grow. And I want to be able to do the same. So if I if I have all these goals and aspirations and I'm, you know, the first date is happening, <clears throat> if we were on a first date and I'm telling you, you know, I'm a business owner and I have, I have plans to open two more businesses and I want to open one out of state so that I can get a second home and I can travel back and forth. And you're like, that's cool. I work at AT and T. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, doing what? Selling cell phones. Cool. Well, you know, what do you? What does your future hold? Like, what do you want to do with yourself? Haven't thought that far ahead. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I, I don't. I'm not going on a second date for that because right. here I am building my future. I don't need somebody to come in and mooch. I want somebody that's going to come in and add value to it. Yeah. So if they have no hobbies, if their hobby is playing video games six hours a day. Yeah. Not interested. Yeah, that's not a hobby. That's escapism. If right. if you're playing it that much, you're using that as an escape to your reality. Yeah. A hobby is something you do a couple hours a week. Mm-hmm. When you when you dig, uh, dictate, when you dedicate that much of your life to something, you are using it to escape your reality. It's it's no right. different than doing dope. Like it's you're not it's not healthy. Yeah. It would also make me uncomfortable if they just like what do you do in your free time? Well, I'm depressed, so I don't really do anything. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want that either. I mean, obviously, everybody's got their baggage. Right. And some people have depression and trauma, but, like, that's not... If we're on a first date and you hit me with, I have depression, but I've taken up photography or I ride my bike every day for 30 minutes. Right. I'm more interested in that than I'm depressed, my life is miserable, this is why my life is so bad. Right. If you're showing me that you're depressed, but you still want to make yourself happy in your life, I'm all here for it. I would plan a second date after that because you're showing me you're willing to work on yourself as a person. I don't think I would do a second date with a pity me me person anyways. Right. Uh, Aside from the fact that I do have depression. Yeah. You have depression. Right. If, If that was our entire first date, we wouldn't have made it to a second date. Right. No, not the whole first date, but like if there's a small conversation of, you know... I push myself daily because I live with depression and like I see how it affects people and X, Y, and Z and I want to be better. I want other people to be better. I would take note of that conversation, yeah. even if it was just a five minute conversation. If it was a five minute conversation of I'm depressed, my life is miserable and it's all, it's everybody else's fault but my own. And we move on from that. I'm still taking note of that conversation. Yeah. I, the accountability thing would have been a big no for me too. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'm glad that we don't have to worry about that shit. Yeah. I, I really am. Like, obviously, we had dinner dates that were not actual dates before we had a date. Right. So we it was ha- just hanging out, going to Applebee's and getting drinks and shit. Right. Having our own conversations that were genuine. They weren't misleading. They weren't needing to put our best foot forward because there was no intention of dating in the right. beginning. Um, so we were able to learn and grow. So by the time we actually had a date, all of that had already been hashed out in a very relaxed scenario. I don't think that you guys should be going on first dates with the intent of sleeping together. First date should be getting to know each other. A first date, unless you already know this person on a personal level, not just the social media level, right. should be getting to know those people. It should be seeing the way they interact with staff. It should be having conversations about what they want in the future. It should be trying to building a foundation of a friendship first because you shouldn't just jump into a relationship with someone that you know nothing about. Right. And Absolutely. that includes a sexual relationship. I was going to say, you shouldn't even be going on dates with the intention of getting into a relationship with said person. I, I agree. A, a date should be, do I want this person in my life at any level? Is this somebody that I'm willing to put the time and effort into getting to know to possibly form a relationship with? If you go on a first date and everything goes great and you're like, all right, now we're boyfriend and girlfriend. Right. No, you don't know this person. In three months, you could figure out that they went to jail two years ago for battery on an ex-wife. Right. Right. You have no idea what's in this person's past. You need to get to know somebody. A date should be in the intention of let's form a friendship. Right. Let's see if we are on the same track. Can we even be friends before we jump into a relationship? I agree with that. And in that way, that foundation is being laid. Right. You know, um, I'm going to kind of sidetrack here for a minute. We got all of this set up now. The new couches, the bookcases, the prints, the lights, everything. We spent an entire week trying to build all this out. I spent an entire week stressed out over all of this, trying to make it work because of the lighting and the camera angles. And though we got it, <clears throat> though we got it set up, I'm not content. And we did order more chairs, and like we're trying to figure that out. So, 
For those of you guys who are watching on YouTube, please go into the comments and let us know what you think of the room. If you like it, are we looking a little too slouchy? Do we not look professional? Like, do we need to change these chairs out to actual chairs so that we're sitting up straight and having um, a, a better moment? I will say the only thing I think I need now is some sort of stand back here yeah, so that I can put my drink back here so that I don't have to try to reach over there because I have to move my whole body and then reposition myself. Right. So if I had a way to just set a drink back here or back here so I could just grab it and go, that would be ideal. I do like these chairs. They're comfortable. I don't know. Anyways, you guys, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of the podcast room. Do we need to change it again? Does this, does this look uh, presentable for you guys? Because I know this is a very different scenario than our last podcast, and I haven't seen anything that looks like this yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that these chairs might be too much, but I guess we'll have to wait and see over the next day or so how they, they pan out in terms of use. I don't have anything else on that first date conversation. I, I think that that pretty much touches bases. So I have one more point. I'm going to read what I highlighted and see if it's something you even want to get into on this podcast. So okay. the topic is, do you want to solve or do you want to argue with your partner? Okay. So I wrote down, when you bring up something your partner did that hurt you, for an example, are you looking to attack or are you looking to explain? Do you want your partner to feel like a piece of shit or do you want to fix it? Like long term, do you listen to your partner's perspective accountability? So that statement of do you want your partner to fix it or, or feel like a piece of shit is a big one. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of conversations are, are coming from a perspective of I'm hurt. I want them to feel my hurt. And right. in the process, I'm going to make them hurt, too, because right. eye for an eye. That's exactly why I wrote that down, too, because from what I've seen and what I've done in my past, if my partner hurt me, gloves are off, a few, you hurt me, now I'm gonna hurt you back so right. you can feel as bad as you made me feel. And that's not the way you handle your situation. Part of that is the reason why my first marriage ended. Right. It doesn't work. So if you are bringing something up to your partner and you wanna have a conversation about how you felt and you don't wanna feel that way anymore, you have to approach it like a problem solver, not an eye for an eye. Right. I'm telling you from experience that is something that ended my relationship. I have seen it end other relationships. Con communication and conversations. Right. Well, those conversations need to be approached that this is a problem and not you are the problem. Right. Because somebody's if somebody does something that you don't like, it's an action. Yeah. You don't like the action. You don't like the emotional response. You don't like the way they handled the situation. It's not you don't like them. Mm -hmm. It's you don't like the way that they, they behaved. Right. Um. And sometimes behavioral traits are problems, but you need to be able to figure out your shit and not just unload on your partner. Yeah. Um, that scenario, when you approach a conversation like that, trying to resolve a situation, it needs to be from a I feel and not from a you did. Right. So that comes into I and you statements. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say you statements, it's, acu it's ac um, accusational. When you say I statements, you're telling your partner how you feel. But if you say, I feel like, Shit, when you do this, you're still making a you statement. It's not an I statement. You just prefaced it with an I statement. Mm. So it needs to be, um, I feel like X, Y, and Z when X, Y, and Z happens. You don't throw you in there. You, you know, you don't, you, you need to try to remove that and you need to try to do it in a way that it's asking questions and not making statements because statements can be triggering okay. and accusational. So it needs to be, you know, how do you feel about this? Let me throw a like a hypothetical out. Okay. You. Dude gets off of work and then goes to a bar. Doesn't tell his wife. Okay. This happens two to three nights a week. She has verbalized it hurts my feelings when you don't keep me updated. Whatever. How should she approach that situation then? Um, <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say... So in that scenario, the proper way to address that, in my opinion, would be... No, let's, so let's say when I'm not updated it makes me feel like I'm not a priority. Okay. And he's still like, whatever, I'm going to do what I want. Then how should she approach that situation? Because that's an I statement. It is. It absolutely is. And it can be, it could be addressed in a, a, a second scenario where I don't know if you're safe. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's going on. You could be in an ambulance. You could be in a hospital. You could have been arrested mm -hmm. because you're not keeping me up to date on where you're at. I sit here and worry. Right. And I don't, I, it's not fair to me to have to sit here and constantly worry about if you're okay or not. Mm -hmm. So if you were to just tell me, like, I'm going to the bar, I'm not going to get mad about it. 
but you're going to make it so that I'm not worrying anymore. I'm not sitting here panicked and stressed out because now it's not a matter of you piece of shit. How dare you go to the bar every single night when you could be at home with the kids and helping me around the house. You're changing the narrative of the conversation about your concerns. Now, in the event that you are pissed off that they're going to the bar and not staying at home and helping with the kids and all that shit, that's a whole different conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, And in that scenario, you you know, it would be a, I'm overworked. I'm, I'm overstressed. I need you to come home so that I can take 15 minutes and, and, you know, give me 30 minutes with the kids before you go out. I don't care if you go out. You're going to do what you want to do anyways. I can't make you be here, but I need a break. So if you come home and give me a little bit of extra time to let me get on top of my game, you can go do what you want to do. I don't care. At that point, they're going to be more apt to be like, okay, she just needs a break, and then I still get to go to the bar Mm -hmm. versus being told what they're going to do because people don't like to be told what they're going to do. Right. So... And in that same that same conversation, because I know there's going to be somebody in the comments going, "Well, they should just come home." Yeah, yeah, they should. But but you can't make them. But if you married somebody who likes to go out to the bar and drink four or five times a week, and you you procreated with them, and you have kids, that was the choice you made. You did that. Mm-hmm. That you, goes right you, back to not dating. Right, but that also goes back to when you're on that first date and someone shows up unpresentable. That's mm-hmm. how they're they're going to show up on your ten ten year anniversary. Right. When somebody shows you who you are, who they are, you are accepting that. So if you marry somebody or you have children with somebody who goes to the bar four or five nights a week, you cannot expect a status change right. to make them change as a person. Right. You got to also keep in mind that people are who they are. Yeah. Like you're saying, they are who they are. And, and just because you get married doesn't mean that they're going to change who they are. Mm-hmm. And you shouldn't marry somebody without having the conversation like, hey, I, I recognize that you enjoy going to the bar a lot. If we get married and have kids, are you going to stay at home or are you going to continue going to the bar? Because if they're like, yeah, I'm going to keep going to the bar, don't have kids with them. Right. You know they're not going to be present as a parent. You did that to yourself. These kind of conversations need to happen. I understand that people will sometimes change for the worst in relationships, and I believe that a lot of that comes down to them being unhappy, being a shell of a person, not not liking their partner, not liking their home life, whatever the case may be. Those conversations also need to be had. We can sit here in what if scenario over and over and over again. And I'm, I'm not trying to do that. Right. So if, if you guys want to get in the comments and bring in all these <laughs> what if conversations and what about isms and all that shit, like whatever, you're, you're just going to drive the algorithm. Okay. What about ism and what if statements? So if somebody throws in, well, what if this? Okay. Well, if that was the conversation we were having, then we would address it. Yeah. When after we have a conversation, you hit us with what if you're typing that in the comments of a video that's already posted. This could be six months old. I'm not going to see your what if right. scenario in the comments. If I do, then it'll be its own separate conversation on a new video or in a new TikTok. Your what about isms and what if in a conversation that we are having on a specific on a specific subject means absolutely nothing. I think it's important to remember that these conversations that we have on here are specific conversations. And though you're seeing clips of them on TikTok, Mm -hmm. because we do add clips, you're getting a small fraction of of a broader picture. And when you you see that small area, your depth of field is so narrow, you're not seeing the bigger picture. Right. So when you, when you, if you're not willing to come back and look at the full video and watch the content to really understand what you're talking about, you sound like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Because we know the full conversation. So when you go, well, what about this? And I'm like, yeah, that was discussed. You missed it. I'm going to say nine times out of ten, your what ifs or right. what abouts were already addressed. Or completely irrelevant to the conversation. Right. And like you said, it's a little pinpoint on a massive conversation. You're getting one to three minutes out of a three-hour podcast. Right. Right. And a lot of these conversations are 10 to 15 minutes long. Right. And most of those clips are a minute. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I don't, I really don't, I on a personal level don't do what ifs. Even on people who stitch videos and have the conversations and, and the whole conversation is a three-minute conversation and that's the end of it. I'm not going to come into the comments and go, well, what will, you know, women do it too. Right. Or, well, what about when this happens? I, I It's irrelevant. Right. And, and a perfect example for that is when that, um, that video that I made, which is still getting tons of views where the guy was, I was like, he understood the assignment because he wouldn't allow his woman to go to the gas station at 11 o'clock at night. He was going. Um, no, no gentleman in the right man, mind would let the woman go, right? People are like, well, what if they're single? Well, this the conver- is an irrelevant conversation right. to you. It doesn't apply to you because it is a man saying that no gentleman would allow his woman to go. So if you're single, you're not anybody's woman. Right. Bye. Go to the gas station at 11 o'clock at night and hope that somebody there is, is, is going to look out for women if you're in a bad situation. Or don't go at night. <clears throat> right. And then you get the people who are like, well, 
I was taught to fight. This this one gets me. And 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 like I wasn't going to bring this up, but because we're talking about it now, I'm going to. The amount of women who are like, I carry. I I I grew up with brothers. I know how to fight. Blah 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 blah. I know how to fight and I carry. Right. I am six foot and two hundred and thirty pounds. If somebody hits me in the back of the head, if you're unconscious, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I, I can box. It doesn't matter that I know a little bit of jujitsu. It doesn't matter that I have a weapon. Mm-hmm. If I get hit in the back of the head and I'm out on my feet or I am unconscious, I'm useless. There's a whole lot of of those comments in that video, and I keep going to address them. Like you mm-hmm. think you're a badass and invincible, and you're not. You're not. But I'm not trying to perpetuate the the conversation of, of violence against women because that's also not what I'm here for. You know, we're, we make these podcasts to try to make men better, to make women better. Right. And then we get a whole lot of conversation in there, too, where women go, well, you know, men should be teaching other men to be better men. Why don't you raise your children to be those better men? Because I'm a grown up. Right. It's not my job to raise other men. You know, there are a lot of men out there who are already just beaten down by the world and don't want to do better because every time they try to do better, they just get shit on. Yep. How about you be a woman who just acknowledges a man who looks broken on the road? Yeah. Like if a man is looking like he's just having a really hard day, compliment his outfit. Yeah. Say, hey, man, your hair looks good today. And keep going. That compliment is going to change that whole man's day. They need to be like, damn. You know, there are there are just nice people in the yeah. world. Yeah, you, you don't even have to raise... If you don't have children, just be a good person in right. the fucking universe. Ooh, I just said the F word. I'm so sorry. It's all right. I'm getting agitated. There are so many ways people can implement change in the world. It's just small steps. Right. I agree. And I mean to get so passionate. In that. No, I agree. I, I know that that's not really even relevant either in terms of, of this specific conversation, but you're right in that <clears throat> people get so wrapped up in, in them. Mm-hmm. What about me? Right. Instead of knowing that there are other people around you that that could be going through it, you know, I um, you ever see those videos of the guy with the sign and the blindfold mm-hmm. that says, "If you're depressed, give me a hug." Yeah, and like they post it on TikTok mm-hmm. and they share it. And and though, <clears throat> though I enjoy watching those videos, I, I genuinely do, and I enjoy watching the videos where people are giving homeless people money and, and all of that shit. I know that they're doing it for views; they're not doing it for anything other than the algorithm. Right, they're trying to make money on TikTok and to drive uh, whatever it is that they're doing. It does make you feel good when you see those things. Mm-hmm. So when you see those things, you may be more apt to repeat that process because it's a learned behavior. You're, you're seeing it. And I only bring that up because when you watch the opposite side of TikTok where people are shitting on each other and men are the problem and women are evil and all of that nonsense, you are now hearing that and you're, you're learning it. Right. So if, you're, if you've cultivated a feed on TikTok where all of your content is shitting on people, you're going to be a horrible person. Because you're making that decision to, to follow that kind of content. And, and social media is teaching us how to think, teaching us what to think, not how to think. Right. It doesn't teach us to think. It teaches us to follow and obey. It's just, it shows us thought patterns regurgitated by other people. Yep. All right. So first email. Do you want to write, do you want me to just say the name of it? The subject. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Follower from TikTok. Chris and Chris, I love your relationship aspects. It has helped me and my fiance so much already. We have started the check-ins. He didn't like it or understand it at first. Now he is saying, hey, do you have a few minutes? Absolute game changer. We have four young kids, a two-year-old boy, a one-year-old girl, and birth control failed us, so 11-month-old twin boys. Wow. So not only did it fail you, it fucked you. Oh, yeah. And, and I'm, I mean that it, like sincerely because if you were on birth control, you weren't trying and you got two for the pl- price of one. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. I mean, congratulations. <laughs> I love that you guys have a big family. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be positive. I wonder how that conversation went. Yeah. Like I've been on birth control for two years. Well, they have a one-year-old. So wait, well, so they have a one-year-old and 11 month old twins. How is that even possible? That's not possible. So did you guys not have the two kids together before the twins? Yeah. I'm guessing somebody's a bonus parent. Right. You know, the um, when you're on birth control, if you get put on antibiotics. Yeah, it negates it. It can fuck up the birth control. Yeah. And people don't know that. Right. You wow. guys should know that. You should know that. Your doctor should tell you that. Yeah. You should be researching the medications you take. Yeah. I am so anti- Western medicine. Yeah. I really am. I, yeah. I, I've just seen so many side effects. And because doctors get mm-hmm. paid 
to push specific drugs from drug companies. Right. They get paid for it. Right. So they it's get kickbacks. Money. Right. So the more prescribed Lexapro mm-hmm. they give out, the more of a check they get from the pharmacies or from the drug companies. So if they're prescribing Lexapro and somebody's already on a drug and those two drugs have an issue, we've talked about this a lot, Right. that creates a side effect that they is now to. migraines or something. Mm-hmm. They now get a third drug. Now those three drugs are dancing around in the system. You know what's going to happen. Right. Before you know it, you're on 40 medications. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. It's not worth it to me. It's not worth it to me either. I would rather die than be on 40 medications Same. to deal with all of that. Same. That's why I don't go to the doctor unless I think I'm dying. Like right. when I had that kidney stone, I thought I was having kidney failure mm-hmm. because I... I, I peed more blood than I think should have happened. Yeah. Um, and was in more pain than I've ever felt in terms of like my kidneys. You were pale. Yeah. I almost like passed your lips out. Were blue. Like that was, it was rough. Yeah. I was um, absolutely horrified. But had I not thought I was having kidney failure, had I, I believed that that was a kidney stone, I wouldn't even have went to the hospital. Right. I'd, I'd have grabbed a bottle off the shelf and I'd have, I'd have pounded a whole lot of whiskey and got shit faced drunk just to deal with the pain mm-hmm. until it went away. Right. But I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know. I don't I don't like the idea of taking prescription medicine. Yeah. You want to hear something messed up? Sure. Piggybacking off of doctors just look at patients as money. So my mom's had cancer for five years. Her insurance just changed and the cancer center dropped her as a patient. No recommendations for new doctors. They're like, we no longer accept your insurance. You're going to have to find new people. Instead of finding new insurance? Well, she's on disability now. Oh, okay. Due to the cancer, she can't work. Wild. So the whole cancer center was like, no new recommendations. Here's your records. Good luck. So they said, we can we can beat this cancer. Yeah. We're going to treat you with all this shit. Not tell you how bad it can get. Not mm-hmm. tell you the fact that it can deteriorate your bones. Yeah. Not tell you that you're essentially injecting or um, IV in, ingesting yeah. mustard gas. For those of you who don't know, do your research on, on cancer treatment in, in Nazi Germany. Not to mention the radiation and the things that it can do to your body. So yeah, you you might be beat cancer, but you have no idea what this is going to do to you for the rest of your life in terms of your body being messed up from the drugs that we're giving you. Yep. And then go, okay, well now you're permanently disabled because we fucked your body up. Sorry, the insurance dropped. You get fucked. Like, come on, man. And the, they just told her a week ago that she re- her back is broken again. It's m- absolutely insane. The The medical system in the United States does not treat or cure they no. want to keep you as a patient. The longer they keep you as a patient, the more money they can build the insurance, the more money they can make. And if you go back and look, insurance companies were not a thing until the government got involved in medical mm-hmm. and, and created that. Every time the government gets involved in something, college, for example, when you look at college tuition in the 30s and 40s, it was based off of grades and in the event that you could get a loan from a bank. So it wasn't guaranteed that you could go to college. Mm-hmm. And then once the government started agreeing to back student loans, saying that they would buy the debt from the people who were defaulting on the debt, um, tuition went up because it became very easy for people to go to college. So now everyone can go to college and have all this debt. Well, the government owns that debt. It's no longer owned by a bank. Every single time the government gets involved in something, it creates problems. We just let it happen. Yeah, of course we do because people want to be taken care of. We want our, our Netflix and our air conditioning. And as long as, as we have internet and DoorDash, we're never going to say anything or do anything because... Because you know, life is convenient for us Yeah, right now. we want that comfort. It's all right. It, things things are, are not going to last like this. No. Nope. So, <clears throat> back to the email. <laughs> Sorry about that derail. We dated for nine months before conceiving our first. Not long enough. So here's why I'm messaging you. Girl, I don't understand. I don't understand time frames. So you dated for nine months before conceiving your first... So your twins are not your first with this person, Mm -mm. but neither is your one-year-old because having a one-year-old and an 11 month old twins does not add up. Right. It just, it, right. It doesn't to me. A one-year-old and that they're one month apart. Right. You pretty much have triplets. Right. Yeah. It's not possible. Okay. I want to make sure that wasn't just me. So the problem is husband works 12 hour shifts he works two nights, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and then, th- and then off for three days. Then works three days, off for two. I know that working night shift is hard. I did it for a long time working at the hospital. Anyways, I cannot grasp or understand how I'm not to get angry. Typical day, 
for the husband is that he works and he gets home at 7 13 a.m takes a shower wow that's a very specific just 7 13 every morning there's never traffic or anything mm-hmm. All right, so he gets home at 7.13, takes a shower, stays awake until 9 a.m., latest 10 a.m., and then sleeps from 9 to 10, from 9 or 10 until 6 p.m. when it's time for work. Asked if he sleeps good, he says barely only got four hours knowing that I looked at the clock when he went to sleep. So I'm going to pause you right there. Are you in the room watching him laying in bed, and then like the moment he swaps to sleep, you're like, all right, it's 5.15, yeah. Or because him laying down versus him actually being asleep are two different things. Right. We're staying asleep. Right. You and I can lay in bed for two hours before we actually fall asleep. Right. So laying down at 8 p.m. and then falling asleep at 10 p.m. Right. There's also nights where we lay down and fall asleep at 9 30, 10 o'clock, and I'm up at midnight and I'm up from midnight till 4 35 in the morning and finally right. fall back to sleep. Sleep patterns are, are, are off. Mm-hmm. So. That that the night shift thing, him him working nights and sleeping like that, like that's our bodies are not meant to sleep during the daytime. Right. That's why when the sunlight starts coming through the window, we wake up. Like that's genetic DNA, you know, three hundred thousand years of, of history. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, you're supposed to run and hunt and and do things during the daylight because we didn't have electricity. Right. Uh, also, less predators during the day. Right. Yeah. So there's a whole, you know, and you could see. Yeah. <laughs> so in the event that you had to run from a predator, you could run. <laughs> We're not meant to work night shifts. Right. So that takes a toll on us. There's actually studies done that say that when you work third shift for a long duration, you're t- you take years off of your life. I believe that. Because your body is not meant to work in that, 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 um, it, it stresses your central nervous system and, and messes with your clock. Yeah. So you're not supposed to do that for long durations of time. Mm-hmm. I've worked a shift like that where I was three on, two off, three on, two off, uh, or three on, two off, two on, three off. And it, it because it was in a very high heat environment, when I came home, I was useless. Right. I would fall asleep the moment I got in, and I would wake up and shower before going back to work, but I would I would basically sleep that entire time. Mm-hmm. And there was no downtime. And on the nights, the weekends that I had the three nights off, that first day was like a, an 18 to 20 hour sleep trying to catch up because my body was so exhausted. Right. It, it's just a bad situation. Mm-hmm. All right. So he says, I only slept four hours knowing that I looked at the clock when he went to sleep. A non-work day, a non-work night day for him, gets home at 7.13 a.m., stays awake until 9 or 10, falls asleep, wakes up at 11 p.m., goes back to sleep at 12 a.m., and then sleeps until 10.30 a.m. He's exhausted. Right, so he's getting caught up on his sleep. Yeah, well, you can't catch up on sleep. It's his central nervous system is taxed. Right, so it's trying to recuperate. Right, so you know when people do, like, powerlifting and strongman and all of that, like, people who bodybuild, when you, you can go seven 14 days without a rest day at some point your central nervous system is going to go okay bro like i can't keep pushing like this i need a down day or a down couple of days so it, you have to take that downtime. you can your muscles can recover every night you sleep your muscles recover your body recovers your central nervous system is something completely different you can't take supplements for that you can't do anything other than let your body tell you what it needs right and in the event that he's working hard hard work and he's coming home that third day and needing to sleep like that, it's because his, he's, his body's done for. Yeah. Yep. Been there. That shit sucks. It does. So he goes back to sleep 12 a.m. and then wakes up at 1030, hangs out with me and the kids, and then falls back to sleep by 6 or 7 p.m. and then sleeps until 11 p.m. and then goes back to sleep at 12 or 1 a.m., then wakes up at 6.30 and stays up until his time for work at 6.30 p.m. So he's running a full 24 hours awake. So he just spent all day with you and the kids, goes to bed, wakes up, spends another full day with you and the kids, right. and then goes right into work with no sleep. Right. That's, and then works until 7 a.m. Right. Which could be why he's so run down by the time he's on his three off. It's a big deal. That's a massive sacrifice. Yep. And you're angry at him? This is that, man is killing himself. Is, is that why she's angry? Okay, so she does that. And it goes on to say, and he is mad he didn't get any sleep before work. I am so angry because we have four babies and one is my break. On nights he works, I do dinner and baths every night by myself and bedtime. And when he is home, I have to freak out to get him to help me. So I finally just stopped asking him. And if I do get out of the house, I come back and he has put all four kids to bed by 630, which means they will be wide awake by 3 a.m. ready to party. I am just so angry and he says my job is so easy. I don't feel heard or seen. He ensures me that he loves me and blah, blah, blah. Wow. So she doesn't work. 
She doesn't work. I, I'm sorry. I'm really hung up on the blah, blah. So he's, yeah, I am too. He's telling you that he loves you. He's telling you his feelings. And because you're frustrated and angry in this moment, writing this email, everything that man has told you from his heart is just blah, blah, blah. To right. You. And there could be pertinent information there that, that could actually help us. Right. In this scenario. I would be absolutely devastated. I don't care how rocky our relationship is. If you go to somebody else and say, well, she tells me that she loves me and all this other bullshit. Yeah. I would be devastated. If he loved me, why watch me struggle? Both of my parents passed away February 4th of 2022 and December 19th of 2021. What's that got to do with anything? I don't know. Okay. I mean, it sucks that her parents died. I'm not taking away from that, but why is that relevant to what's going on a year later in her life? She added her phone number at the end and said to you, Chris, for your wife, please, I need her help desperately and can use a friend and she is beyond genuine. Okay. So guys, I'm going to put this out there right now. Under no circumstances will we ever call any of you. Uh, ever. Ever. I don't care if it's like a last ditch effort lifeline extension. We are not putting our personal information out there in a way that somebody could reach out to us. It's not happening. Right. There, we have talked numerous times about doing Zoom calls because that is, is private, but we have very hard limits on things that we are not going to get into. We are not going to dis discuss our sex life. Mm -mm. We're not going to discuss your sex life. We're not going to discuss phone calls. We're not entertaining that shit. Um, <clears throat> we have people from Patreon that wanted to mail us stuff and we got a PO box for it. Like mm -hmm. our personal lives will remain that way. Right. And in the event that our personal lives get, um, interrupted or compromised because of this podcast, I will shut this shit down. And, and I mean that, and I will move and that will be the end of it. That's not happening. So I, I understand her need and want to talk. There are hard lines that will not be crossed in this podcast, and I would appreciate it moving forward if that does not happen again. Right. And, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not looking for friendships in this. No. You, I'm not going to bring you into my life and tell you everything about my family and my children and my past, and that's not happening. Right. I don't view this as a friendship. You're looking to have somebody in your life that you can vent to and get advice from. Right. That's a therapist. I am on the Internet giving advice and sharing past experiences and my knowledge to help. That's the extent of what I'm going to do in this. Right. We're not going to be BFFs. You know, you can turn me your internet mom. There are people on TikTok doing that now, like young women who don't have a good mother figure. I'm fine with that. Right. Also, I, I the, this woman, I'm, I'm going to hurt your feelings. I understand that you're stressed and frustrated and all this is going on. This is a life you guys chose. Yeah. This man is working his ass off to provide for a family of six he has the sole income. So you view your life as hard as stressful. You're taking care of the children and doing everything, everything at home. Everything falls on his shoulders. Right. If he doesn't go to work and provide the way he's providing, you're going to be homeless with four children under the age of five. You guys need to sit down and have a conversation of where your intimacy is. Right. If you need a break, because I'm, I'm hung up on the, the day that he doesn't sleep. Right. There's your day to take a break. Yeah. And the fact that you, you've you missed that window and don't realize that is a problem. If he mm -hmm. gets up at 630 and goes to work at 630, there's 12 hours for you to take a break. He's home. Right. So if you need three or four hours to go get your hair done and get your nails done, get Starbucks, walk around Hobby Lobby and have your day. Right. That's your day to do that. And you need to have that conversation with him. Like, hey, I need three hours to go and, and decompress and get away from the kids and, and live my life a little bit. I need to do that on the day that you are up from 6.30 to 6.30. That's a very easy conversation. So he's doing all these crazy shifts, sleeping during the day, giving her a day off without sleeping to go to work right. and spending one full day with the family. Where is his day off? He doesn't get one because he's sleeping. Right. So this man's just running himself into the ground to please everybody else around him. Gotcha. That's a problem the, it, on both sides. They both. I, this entire scenario should have been talked about when he got that job. Truly. Okay, so say... They were together for nine months before they had their first child. Right. What if this has been his job the whole time? That should have been a conversation. This is his job. This is the way he's provided for himself. And now he has a woman with children. Right. If this man's making damn good money, like say he's pulling almost six figures a year. You can't ask him to quit his job and get a day, day job and cut $30,000 off of your annual salary. Right. It's going to suck. Your life is going <clears> to <throat> suck for a while. Say, say for example, that he wasn't working this job. Yeah. Because this is what we do, mm -hmm. right? So if he didn't work this job and they had normal jobs when they started and he got a high-paying job working the hours that he's working, when he took on that job, this th this conversation should have been had. Right. You know, I, I'll be able to, to give you this amount of time 
once or, or twice a week where you get to go do your own thing. Right. You have four kids. You know, if you don't have parents to watch, and I don't know where his parents are because she didn't mention them because it was a her thing. Right. The entire email was very her, her centric. Maybe you find a babysitter in the neighborhood to come over and watch the kids while you go get Starbucks and just get away from them for a minute. There are things that you can do, but that conversation needed to be had immediately so that you could have made the plans. Right. This this is exactly what we talk about in the dating phase with a foundation. It is. If you can't communicate to your partner in the beginning of a relationship, you're going to end up right here. Yeah. Because you don't know how to communicate to your partner because you rushed everything. Yeah. Nine months is not a long time. It's really not. Mm -hmm. And now, now you have nine months of dating and then a pregnancy that's another nine months where hormones are out of whack and everything's taking effect. Right. And then you have postpartum, which is more hormonal depression and nonsense that, that, that goes on. And I call it nonsense because it's it you can't control it. It's just right. shit. You know what I mean? It's just something you have to deal with. Um, so now you have the first three years of your life being two out of three hormonal. You didn't build a foundation. You don't know how to communicate. And now you're wondering why you're a stay at home with no free time and your husband works his ass off and he doesn't get free time either. And you guys can't figure out how to, to make shit work. You know, this could even be the thing where like, that one day where he comes home, he sleeps all day, sleeps all night, spends all day with the family and kids, and then sleeps. Split the day. Yeah. If you want to wake up in the morning and go shopping at Target and hit Starbucks and go get your nails done, you have three hours. Yeah. That is that is long enough. I, I Before I went back to work, piercing and apprenticing, it would take about 45 minutes to get my nails done. And that's for new sets, refills, whatever. Right. It rarely ever takes longer than an hour. If you make an appointment, if you do a walk-in, that's on you. Right. Shopping at Target, an hour is long enough to roam around a store, window shop, buy things you might need, whatever. Right. I would also like to point out that if you are roaming around Target and getting your nails done and getting those kind of things, going mm -hmm. to Hobby Lobby, Starbucks, and he's the one that's financially providing for the family, you don't overlook that either. Right. Because the the time that he's putting in to do the things that he's doing to give you the life that you have, including the hairs and nails, is because he's killing himself. So you're both doing the work. Right. You may not have a job mm -hmm. or you may not work, however you want to word that. Being a stay-at-home mom is labor intensive. Right. Your time is dedicated to children, just like he's going to work and his time is dedicated to the company. Mm -hmm. You both have um, responsibilities that need to be met. Right. You just did it in a way that you don't get any free time and neither does he. Mm -hmm. So if she does three hours in the morning, say she's home by noon, he should be allowed to go out for three hours, whether it be you guys do lunch together and you have family time and he goes out for dinner with the boys or whatever. Right. Or if he wants to go out to lunch with his mom, whatever it is, you guys need to find a structure for one day in the week where both of you can get whatever self-care time that you need. I was going to go somewhere else with that and it completely left my mind. No, it, it, I mean, I don't know where you were going to go, but that, that point that you just made is, is valid as fuck. Right. Like that's, and I got to be honest because I've worked those, those hours and mm -hmm. I have worked those hours in a high heat environment. And by high heat, I mean, it was like 130 to 140 degrees in the back of the room that we were in. Uh, so by the time you got your day off, you were run down and exhausted. So even in the event that he had three hours in, in a week to go do something, I guarantee you he would want to relax. Right. I don't know what he does. It doesn't say. Uh, but I know that, that that schedule is hard, and it's hard for nurses. It's hard for anybody that works those those hours. You know, so she said that she knows working night shift is hard. I did it for a while while working at a hospital. When did you do that? Were you single? Or were you working a night shift supporting a family of six? Right. Because <clears throat> those are two different scenarios. If you're working a night shift as a nurse or a doctor or whatever you were doing, which is dope, I couldn't handle that job. So kudos to you. I'm not trying to shit on that. I just really want you to think if you are working a night shift providing for yourself or providing for one child, that is a lot less stressful than recognizing you have a family of six resting on your shoulders. Yeah. So to an extent, you understand how hard it is working a night shift. I'm not saying that being in a hospital is not a stressful job. It certainly is. I don't know how to hell to word this without getting shit on in the comments. Yeah, they're getting shit on either way. So just say what you're going to say because, I, you know, go ahead. Sorry. Just say what you're going to say. So working night shifts versus whatever job he's doing, two different jobs, two different stress levels. Right. My point is working a night shift while supporting a family of just you or a family of one child versus a family of six are two different stressful levels. Right. Stress levels. Work environment matters too. Right. Working in a hospital is stressful, but working, like I said, in my mm -hmm. scenario in a high heat situation is exhausting. Yeah. So it might be 
mentally exhausting, but physically exhausting is a very different scenario. Right. You know, you can't will yourself through physical exhaustion. When your body starts to shut down, you can't make it stop. Right. You can push through being tired. You can push through mental exhaustion. It's a different scenario. If your body gives out, there's nothing you can do about right. that. That's it. That's it. Especially when you're when your central nervous system gets taxed, like I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Um I I I really think that because we're so far ahead with the emails that we really need to start cherry picking emails. Okay. Um I maybe we just dedicate a day where we sit down and go through emails and remove ones that aren't really relevant or are not going to get a good response because I got to be honest, this email is not something that if I would have pre-screened this, I wouldn't have addressed this email. I would have. I would have just sent her a response back like you and your husband need to have a conversation about time management and that would have been the end of it. Well, I think this is a good conversation to have anyway because there are a lot of women in this position. Yeah. And you know, I don't think this woman has really sat down and realized what her husband is sacrificing. This man is working 12 hour shifts overnight and sleeping during the day he is aware how little he is in his children's lives. He knows that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So this man is killing himself, going to work, losing sleep to provide for his family, trying to give the best future possible while recognizing that his children are never really going to know him. Right, and they're not. You're absolutely right. They're not. It's no different than what we were talking about the other day when the people work 12 hours a day, six days a week, come home on Sundays yeah. and, and want to relax and the kids are annoying. And you want to say that he has such a shitty attitude and he's frustrated that he's not getting sleep? I would be frustrated too. Yeah. Especially if I'm doing all of this, coming home to a woman bitching at me that I'm not here enough or I'm not present enough or I'm not doing enough. Right. Not not appreciated for the efforts that I'm putting in. Right. I, I get that. You know you know that there will be people in the comments going, what about her? What about her? What about her? And there, we, we, already, we already provided the answer to that. So right. if you're in the comments right now going, what about her? We've already addressed how they need to make this work. Mm -hmm. This is a, a real life scenario where he, we are addressing what he's going through because she's not realizing it because she's angry with him. Right. She. This is an all my point of view as his wife. Right. This is why I'm mad. And she even said, how can I not get angry about this? You cannot get angry about this by recognizing what he is sacrificing for you and your family. Yep. And then have a conversation about your needs. Right. And, you know, there are women being a stay at home mom is stressful. It is stressful. Right. And there are women right now who are killing themselves working six days a week with their husband while he's doing his own separate job to provide for their family, right. wishing she could be at home 24 seven with her children. Right. No matter how stressful it is, because she's getting to see her kids for maybe two hours a night. Yep. You're not wrong. It's all perspective. You think that your life is so shitty and it's so hard and you have four kids and your husband doesn't help when in reality you have a roof over your head, your husband's out there providing for you. You don't have to worry about when your mortgage is going to be paid. You don't have to worry about where your groceries are coming from. You don't have to worry about going to a job and providing for your family and worrying about, are my kids going to know who I am in 10 years? Are they going to know what my interests are? Am I going to know what my children's interests are? I can't top that. No? <laughs> no. No, I can't. Because you just hit everything. Like Specifically, the, the point that caught me the most in that is that there are people who have husband and wives who have to work full time who have kids and kids go to daycare, they go to grandma's house or, or whatever, and they don't get to know their parents very well because parents are working full time trying to make ends meet just to survive. So in a scenario where you've got a stay at home dad, or I'm sorry, stay at home mom where dad is working and mom is very much a part of their lives, you guys are are, are team effort there. Like you're right. co you're you're working the best way you can to give the kids the best life that they can because it's not about you anymore. You decided to have kids. It's not about you at all. It's about the kids. Right. And you and your partner need to have intimacy and you need to be on the same page and, and, and taking care of each other to make sure that the kids are taken care of. But if you're resentful that he's working full time, that's probably not the right word. If you were um, resentful, I would say just animosity. She could be resentful that he's at work and she's not. That could be an envy thing. That could be. Maybe she doesn't want to be at home with the kids. Maybe she would. She said she used to work in a hospital. That yeah. could have been her passion. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And in, in, in that you scenario, know, resent is an envy emotion, so yes. It would be. If you're resentful at the fact that you had to give up your career to be a stay-at-home mom, you have to recognize that it was a choice you made. Right. You know, with the birth control failing, I get that, but you said that you have another child with him. Right. I, I really do want to start cherry-picking emails. Okay. Let, let's go to a different one. Well, there's that one. I'm going to move this one. I want peanut butter. You know, I was just thinking that I want I want donuts. I've wanted donuts for three days. I'm craving donuts. We can have today be our cheat day. I, I've been eating like shit for three months. <laughs> Every day's been a cheat day. Yeah. I haven't been eating super bad this week. Yeah. I was going to have Sunday be my cheat day. 
even with me going to Olive Garden on Friday. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, I'm still going to just like get a soup or something. No bread, even though I really love bread. Yeah, I, I think that's a mistake. What? I think you should enjoy yourself when you go out. Yeah. That one meal is not going to kill you. And I don't mean that in that like, you know, that one meal today and then that one meal tomorrow right. and that one meal then. But if you're eating clean 95% of the time, having a little bread bread here and there is not going to be the end of the world. Right. We're not trying to get in contest prep. Like we're not, I know. you know. I still, I just want to feel good about myself. <laughs> I had a whole formulation. That's right. Of words. They were there. I could see them. You know, everybody thinks differently. And when I'm, when I'm thinking of what I want to say, I see the words flash by like in a Star Wars intro, kind of. In a galaxy. And you far, said far that. Away. And you said that. And I just watched them ash. <laughs> like at the end of, 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 of Endgame or whatever, when everyone just, yeah, there's, you were Thanos in my mind just That's now. That's funny. I, I'm aware that we're not trying to be like contest ready or anything. I'm aware that I've gained weight and I was almost back up to 190. And for everyone in the comments, oh my God, 190, you're not fat. I'm aware I'm not fat. I've been 320 right. pounds. I know what it's like to be fat. Right. We have our, we have our barriers. Like right. this is not acceptable weight. When Anything I hit over this, this weight, is not good. Right. That's when I'm aware that I am out of control. I'm a massive binge eater. Same. I have talked about it. Like I would eat to the point to where like, I'm not getting into all of that. It was bad. <laughs> so with me almost reaching 190, I'm like, okay. I'm getting out of hand because that's how I got up to 320 pounds. I was like 190, not bad. 210, it's only 20 pounds heavier. I'm not falling back into that cycle. Yeah. So logically, I know I'm eating a little bit better because I'm already down six pounds from when I started eating right again. It's been what, like four days? It's been about a week. That's good. Are you totally uninterested in this conversation? No, I, I just, I, I, I want you to eat your bread. Right. <laughs> so. I'm just. Sharing my thought process, I guess, I, if anybody I, can relate. I get the 190 thing because mine has been 225. Yeah. That's my, like, I'm happy weight. And I'm, like, 222 right now. Mm -hmm. Before the hurricane, I was at 212. Like, I was, my goal was 200 by the end of the year. I just don't, um, I know that I'm not ever going to step on stage. And the yeah. only person that I'm trying to impress when I'm naked is you and you're impressed. So, like, my body dysmorphia is never going to let me be happy with myself. Yeah, I get that. So... I guess I'm not trying as hard. Okay. This one is a short one. This is this is not a huge thing. This is okay. this is photography based, and because I went back and forth a little bit, I just want to read the email. It's more of a, like a thank you. Okay. <clears throat> to Chris and Chris, first off, let me say I found you two on TikTok with the two be better videos of your podcast. I'll admit I haven't listened to a full episode yet, but I will be in the very near future. Then I found your shared Instagram with all of those amazing amazing photos. I gotta say it was a pleasant surprise to see that content and not just another OnlyFans link. With a mean and, and meaningless post. That makes me feel good. It made me feel really good too. I was like, yeah, that's right. Because of the amount of people who have their Instagram on TikTok linked only so they can link their OnlyFans because TikTok won't let you link spicy links on. Right. Right. You know, that also makes me feel good though because there are couples who do do that. Right. Where they'll whole, use their whole gimmick of their relationship to get people to go to their OnlyFans. Yep. We are wholesome. Yeah, we ain't doing that. I mean, we're kind of wholesome. We, we get kind of raunchy. We ain't we ain't doing the OnlyFans thing though. No, but I say some stupid things. Yeah, we can we can talk all kinds of shit. Yeah, but hell will freeze over before I ever start an OnlyFans. I have too much self respect for that. I ain't yeah. doing that. I could be I could be like like Brad Pitt in Fight Club body, super skinny, right? The whole nine, and be hung like a horse. I ain't doing OnlyFans. Yeah, I don't want people viewing me like that. Right, exactly. It makes me uncomfortable to think that somebody could be touching themselves to me. Right. I don't. No, thank you. Um, I mean. <clears throat> I want to clarify if you're all about that and you're for it and your life is flourishing and you are happy and yeah, it's your, life. your relationships are straight, like dope, live your best life. It's just not for me. I ain't doing it. Yeah. Uh, he said, which I didn't really expect from you too. As someone in the lifestyle, I have found my one true person who 100% supports me through my recovery from addiction, all the ups and downs and the level of communication we have is far beyond anything uh, I've personally experienced uh, before. <sighs> Sorry, I had a burp. Um, your words and insight have only reinforced my will to keep going and to share our journey together. So thank you. Also, what type of camera do you shoot with? Are you both photographers? I shoot a Canon 5D Mark II. Check my Instagram if you want, which he left his Instagram. Mm -hmm. and, and we did check it out. And we did. And he's a solid ass photographer. Yeah, I was impressed. So his Instagram, for all of you who are listening, 
go give this kid a follow. He's a young man who's who's actually really dope with photography. Mm-hmm. It's Anthony's with an S underscore originals with an S. Um, Anthony's underscore originals. So I actually followed him and then um, I asked him if I could drop his name and his Instagram so that I'm not just throwing him out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wanted to talk about the camera thing for a minute because I owned a 5D Mark II during my motorcycle accident recovery in 2009. And I figured it would give a, a quick little easy conversation because we don't, I mean, we do a lot on Patreon, but we don't do it as much here. Right. So I want to kind of talk about just that, if you're okay with it. Yeah. Okay. So in 2009, I was riding my motorcycle home from work. Um, I was riding home from work. Somebody ran a stop sign from a gas station and came within an inch of my front tire. And my only option was to lay my bike down or go through the back window of this dude's car. So I dumped the bike. I broke my hip. I broke my femur. Uh, I'm sorry, not my hip. I broke my tailbone. I broke my femur. My wrist exploded. Uh, my bone came through my skin. I had a titanium plate. What? I'm going to pause you. So knowing that those were your two options and you chose the latter, looking back, would you have just gone through his windshield um, <laughs> or his back window? I got no because I wasn't wearing a helmet. And, and I didn't hit my head on the ground right. that I can remember. Um, it would have been nice to have actually hit his car. I should have yeah. hit his car. I should, have, I should have laid the bike down in a way that it hit his car because he drove off. Yeah. And there was no way for me to insurance or go after him or anything. I had to pay for everything on my own. If I was wearing a helmet, like a full face helmet, and I knew that I wasn't going to get glass in my eye and potentially blind myself, I would have absolutely went through the back of his car. Wear a helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, even if I bought a motorcycle tomorrow, I wouldn't wear a helmet. Unbelievable. If I'm going to bust my head open, I would rather my brain just come out of my head than get stuck in a bucket. Anyway, so I had my motorcycle accident. I broke my tailbone, my femur, my wrist, the bone came through my wrist. I have um, a, a plate that runs the length of my ulna, which is one of the bones in your forearm. It's got four big ass screws in it, and I got 13 pins holding my hand together that are still inside my hand. Before my motorcycle accident, I was 285 pounds and I was maybe 25% body fat. I, I was I was muscular <coughs> um, because I had power lifted for so long. Um, it, it's not really a flex, but I had a 500 for three squat. I could I could do a triple with 500 pounds on my back, ass to calves. Mm-hmm. I was a big dude. Um, my size is what saved my life. The EMT told me that, and the, the hand surgeon was like, you know, if you were a normal size human being, you would have died in that accident. So um, the doctor told me that I, you know, after he reconstructed my, my wrist and, and I had, I couldn't afford to get my leg fixed. So I had to lay on my back with a broken tailbone for six weeks, which was fucking horrendous um, because you can't move. Right. Everything hurts at that point. The moment that he told me that I can start moving around again, I needed a hobby. I couldn't go back to work because I had this hand in a splint and you could see the muscle exposed in my palm. So I couldn't couldn't tattoo, I couldn't pierce, like I was completely out of the game. And um, I needed something to do to get me through my recovery process. And I couldn't go to the gym because I could I could barely walk. Like I was I was really messed up. So I had a friend of mine who did photography and he had a little Canon Rebel with like a nifty 50 cheap hundred mil, uh, 50 millimeter hundred dollar lens. And um, I called him and he came over and like he showed me how to operate the camera taught me about ISO, the triangle, the exposure triangle, and I got to learn a little bit about photography from him. Not much, but a little bit. And I bought a 4 d because I wanted to buy, I, it's kind of shitty, but I wanted a nicer camera than he had. So I bought the, the next camera up. I bought a couple of lenses, and I'm, I'm learning photography, and I'm trying to do my thing. And once I started thinking I was good, and looking back at those pictures, I was fucking garbage. It's so bad. The editing is trash. Like, everything was like... Um, HDR to the max and like super sharp and it was it's just trash right but you got to see your you got to you can go back and see your learning process right I can I absolutely can but looking yeah. back on my earlier everything like oh man people paid me for this shit like <laughs> come on um, but I got to the point where I was able to buy that 5d mark II. it was my first professional level camera and I loved that camera I took that camera to Hawaii when I went and I ruined the sensor on that camera by changing my lenses in a high wind area and um, anytime somebody talks to me about a 5D Mark II, because that was my first, like, I am a pro. Yeah. Like, there's a sentimental thing there. And you knowing, I do, it. I do. And knowing that this dude is using that same camera 12 years later right. and is taking badass photos, like, that's dope. He's doing the thing still. Like, you know, he could have upgraded his camera. I want to say it's only like a 22 megapixel camera. It's not even like a, at the time, it was a big deal. Right. But like, our Sony's 
or you know 64 megapixels on one of these things like and that doesn't really even matter unless you're printing big which mm-hmm. i do i actually print my photos i don't know i just that was a cool moment for me when yeah. he emailed him and told me that so i wanted to share it on the podcast it was really just a selfish moment but like i, I got appreciate I, you sharing that. i got to talk about my my past a little bit and talk about my hobby in photography and he did ask if we both shoot and you were into photography when you were in high school as a hobby mm-hmm. um i sold everything shortly after the hurricane yeah literally everything i had tens of thousands of dollars worth of camera gear mm-hmm. i was running a canon um uh, r5 the new mirrorless canon and i had all all l series glass professional like high end glass and then the hurricane came and like you know i realized i hadn't shot in like a year i just didn't have the motivation to go take pictures i didn't give a shit about it anymore that that passion has gone so I sold all my shit. And like two weeks later, I was like, you know, I really don't think I should have sold that stuff. Like, what if I want to go take pictures? Like, I know that my my phone can do what I need it to do. But like, there's something about being in control and shooting raw and being able to change my light sources and, and manipulate a photo the way I want it versus the way the iPhone sees it. Mm-hmm. And um, you were like, well, you know, if you want to get back into photography, I'll take pictures with you. I'm going to pause you. It wasn't just one conversation. It was Shh, probably. Yes, it was. No, it was just one. <laughs> I'm gonna share it. <laughs> no, I, I understand. I, I didn't have regrets. No, I meant that shit. Like it was gone. I was like, "Fuck it, I ain't doing this no more." Yeah, no, he was good. <laughs> he was he was cool. He was calm. That's I'm it. the one who pushed it. There you go. Thank you. So, <laughs> with me being the one who pushed it, I did. I, 100% I regretted selling that it. shit the moment it left. Well, even in selling it, you were like, "I don't know if I want to do this." Yeah, and I was like, "Okay, well, really think about it." You know. Yeah. You sold it for almost fourteen thousand dollars, yeah. everything. Yeah, I got a lot of money for it. And after the hurricane, like we really needed that money. Like mm-hmm. right then and there it was do or die. We needed the money. Yep. So I told you, you can keep the equipment, sell whatever else, your whiskey collection, whatever you want. Either way, we need the money. Or you can sell it now, buy it later. Right. So you made the exec- executive choice. And I used that. On purpose, you made the executive choice to sell whatever you needed to sell to get the money to, to make support sure us we financially. Good. Right. After selling it, you were like, I don't think I should have done that. And I was like, I think you made the right choice. I know it sucks. I showed you I appreciated you. I was mm-hmm. supportive. I was no, like, you I were. understand. Like, I was the whole thing. And then, like, two weeks later, you started saying, you know, what if I, you know, what if we go to Colorado or something? And I was like, you're right. And then another conversation of, well, Montana is really nice to shoot. You know? <laughs> I was like, yeah, Montana is great. And you're like, oh, if we go to Nevada, yeah. we could do like astrophotography. And I was like, you know, if you really want to buy cameras, I'll dive into it with you. We can do it as a hobby. Right. So I saw that you were having that regret. And you wanted to do it, but you had no motivation to do it. And then you kept telling yourself that, you know, you were like, I had it for a year. I didn't take pictures. Am I just regretting that I don't have it anymore or would I really want to go back in and pick it up? Right. And me recognizing that that was a hobby for you, you loved it. I took it upon myself to be like, okay, well, let's do it together. Because I knew if I was like, let's have a hobby. Yeah. You'd be gung-ho about it. You'd be all in it because now it's something that we can do together to spend right. quality time. Right. That's two birds with one stone right yeah, there. It is. And we get dates out of it. Right. Like <clears throat> you're getting back into something that you love doing that you had no motivation before. And we get more quality time together. And now we're discussing things that we would never discuss otherwise. Right. It's a whole new revenue for our relationship revenue. That's not the right no. word. It's a whole new. Okay. So imagine you're in a dark room and you have a spotlight on one thing in that room and it's eliminated. Everything else is dark. Us doing that together illuminated another part of that room for us. Right. That's, that what, I'm, that's I'm, what I'm envisioning in my mind. Hey, that's the only way I can. <laughs> it, it works. I, you know, I, I do know that I want to vacation a lot. Right. That's my dream is to travel. My, my retirement to me, the perfect scenario is buying a Winnebago Revel, R-E-V-E-L, Revel, because mm-hmm. it's got a shower in it. It's $200,000. I want to buy it outright, so I don't owe any money on it. And I want to get in that van, and I want to travel with the seasons. Yeah. I want to be able to go to Oregon in like October, you know, I, I have very specific things that I want to experience. And even if it only takes a year and I get to experience all of it in a year, I may be over the van life and have to buy a house at that point. I don't know. Right. But in my head, that retirement matters to me. And I want to have the camera gear to do these things. 
So when I'm talking about Colorado and I'm talking about Vegas and I'm talking about all these things where we're going to shooting Montana, et cetera, that's part of it for me. Right. I hate Florida. Me too. I, I, I'm not a fan of the heat. I love where we live. I love where we live. It's not a big town. It's not a small town. It's like the perfect size. Traffic here is not that bad. Like there's not a lot of crime. We live in a fairly decent area. I like where we live. I hate the landscape. I hate swamps. Mm -hmm. I hate mosquitoes. I hate the heat. I hate the humidity. If I could, if I could just teleport my entire city to another state and have everything be exactly the way that it is with a better climate and with mountains, I'd be, I'd be golden. Right. So for me, not taking pictures is because I, I've seen all this my entire life. There's nothing beautiful about this state, not even the beaches. People mm -hmm. fly from all over the world to Florida to vacation here. Those photos are doctored. Those the, are not. Right. But even even with them be, not being doctored, like I, I've gotten some amazing photos on the beaches where the sky was perfect and like everything just lined up. And the only thing I had to do was change the exposure. You know what I mean? Right. Like very little editing and it was perfect. It's still not that beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. It's Florida. It's a beach. Right. They're all over the place. I don't care about that. Well, it's not even just <clears> that. The water's so polluted. There's always garbage on the beach. On our side, for sure. It always smells bad. Yep. Golf side of, of Florida is disgusting. Yeah. Gulf Coast. And, you know, when we went to the Keys and the water was blue. It's like, holy shit, it's actually blue here. Like, it's green right. where we live. And it is. The water's green. You can't see. Once you go like two I would or say three. green or brown. Yeah. Once you go two or three feet, you can't see your feet anymore. Yeah. It, you can't see the bottom. It, it's disgusting. The Gulf of Mexico is a cesspool. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing beautiful about it. I don't want to take pictures here. And like right. even when we go to like Naples in the Botanical Garden, I enjoy taking pictures of bees doing the pollination thing uh, a lot. Yeah. Because you can get some crazy photos if you're if you're able to hit your focus that are hard to get. Mm -hmm. So when I look at those pictures, I'm like, I fucking nailed that shot. Like it makes me feel good because they move. They're quick. Right. So like and people who take pictures of like hummingbirds, you're a gangster if you can take a picture of a hummingbird. Them mm -hmm. things are fast. So like you're shooting at like one two thousandth of a second and you're moving your camera trying to keep up as it's going, you know what I mean? So those things, it's exciting. Right. Um, but if you take me into the mountains and I, I have a dope overlook where I can have to hike to get to it and I can take a picture of an area where there's no people and it's not molested, there's no trash anywhere, like it's clean and pristine, mm -hmm. even if it's not an amazing photo, it's a beautiful landscape, that's what my photography speaks to. Like I want to take and capture those moments. Um this is completely irrelevant to our podcast. It really is. Can we? Let's. Well, now I'm going to tie it back into the podcast. So, <sighs> with me jumping on board with the photography thing and me recognizing that you have such a passion for it, when you kept bringing up the fact that you regretted selling your cameras, I can been like, you made that choice. You need to shut up about it. Yeah. No, you could have. You absolutely could have. We also wouldn't have had the podcast had you not been like, let's buy the right. camera gear. So, every opportunity is a chance to make your relationship a little bit better. Mm hmm. In those scenarios where someone normally, not normally, but I, I've seen it happen enough to say that it's normalized. If somebody in a relationship is constantly bringing up one thing that's a negative, like they're regretting a choice that they made, don't be nasty about it. Yeah. Be supportive. Be like, I hear you. I understand it's rough. What can we do to solve this? Yeah, because being like, I told you so is not going to solve anything. Right. It's really not. All we I'm thinking about the time is you hit me with that. I told you so. What? I don't know. There was a time you hit. I mean, it was a deserved one. Yeah. It was, also it was a, a funny moment. Yeah. yeah okay. It was a joking moment, but like, <clears throat> you know, we also, we, we sold more than just the camera equipment. Yeah. You know, oh no, I, you sold light stands. I got, I got rid of a property after the hurricane to try to make sure that we yeah. were afloat. And after everything panned out, like I overreacted, I absolutely overreacted because I was so worried about employees and businesses and our right. finances. And I was in survival mode hardcore and i i way overreacted it but it kind of postured us through slow season which was nice but now we're playing catch up again yeah so so this email is called your podcast ended my relationship uh oh oh man yeah let's have it i remember when this came through my heart dropped i was like just reading it i was like well i hope it was a bad situation and now you're healthier for leaving it like right. not like and then it starts with i think i should start this email by saying thank you <laughs> but also follow up with help. I started listening to your podcast after seeing your TikTok snippets and being intrigued by your masculine feminine views and communication advice. I've always been into personal growth and development books, podcasts, and just general knowledge to push myself to constantly be, get be, be getting better. But for some reason, I can't ever seem to find a partner that has the same mindset. And so maybe, just maybe, I'm doing it all wrong. I'm going to pause there. So she said... Being intrigued by your masculine and feminine views on com and communication advice. 
people want to shout constantly masculine and feminine ener- masculine and feminine energy and like what it looks like to be in that and all that stuff. This is it. Yeah. And a lot of feminists hate it. Oh yeah. Yep, they do. You know, women who are CEOs have more masculine energy than I do. I am not willing to put myself in a position where I have to delegate hundreds of employees and make tough decisions on how to keep everybody employed. I'm not into that. Right. That is a very masculine mindset in my point of view. I am not built to be under that kind of stress. If another woman is, you are more masculine than I am. And I'm cool with that. Right. If you're happy in your life, that's dope. You can still be feminine and be a boss babe and doing everything and managing and living your life. That's not going to negate the fact that you are still more masculine than somebody say as me. Right. I'm trying to hit every point since nobody can try to be like, oh, well, you said this and all of that shit. You're not going to be able to cover all of it. I want to cover the fact that she said that she's doing everything she can to be better. Mm-hmm. Or he. I don't. It didn't specify. Uh, it doesn't say. Um, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to always find somebody that has that motivation. Right. There's not a lot of people out there who want to thrive. There are people who are content with just being where they are. Right. People want to survive. Right. If, I, I want to thrive. Mm-hmm. You want to thrive. We want more than what we have. Right. If I was look at the seven deadly sins, greed is my seven deadly sin. Yeah. Like my, my, my main one. I want more than I have. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to. And I mean that in every scenario, not just financially. I, I want it all. Like I, I want I want the money. I want the success. I want the knowledge. I want the communication skills. I want the nice cars. I want the nice house. I'm I'm not okay with just sitting stagnant and I know no one's going to give it to me so I got to go get it. And and like if you weren't willing to to work with me the way that we worked this out, you wouldn't be here. Right. I'd be doing that shit on my own. And I would rather do it on my own and build and have what I want than settle and give up a life that I want because I can't find somebody to 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 grind with me. Right. That's a problem. Yeah. So like there's your problem in the email. I don't even know what the rest of it says. But if you can't find a partner that's that's motivated like you are, you just need to do you. Right. Grind. You need to be content with being by yourself. Get that life you want. And then when you when you have that life you want, find somebody that adds to that life. It's also going to be the kind of thing, once you get to a point where you want to be in your life, you're going to start to attract people with the same lifestyle. Yep. You absolutely do attract what you put out. So Law if you attraction. are currently working at McDonald's and you're going to bars every Friday and Saturday night, you're going to be in the crowd you associate yourself with. You're also going to be broke. Right. (laughs) But if you're working at McDonald's and you're trying to open your own company, focus on paying your bills and opening your company. Yep. You don't need to be focusing, paying on your bills, trying to open a company and trying to maintain a relationship with Kyle who still lives with his mom. Yep. Yep. I mean, if you're both grinding dope, but if he's not like, why are you even trying to add that stress to you? I'm very open to constructive criticism. Like I said, my relationship ended when I found your podcast. We had been struggling beforehand, and I really saw the benefit you both provided as a positive that maybe could help us both grow and understand each other better. When I mentioned the podcast and how I was excited and that we could both learn and implement the knowledge in our relationship, my then boyfriend completely dismissed my enthusiasm and said that I was trying to change him, and if I don't love him how he was, then it was clear that I wasn't the one for him. I concur. You were pushing him to be better and he was not ready for that. That's a lot. Yeah. If you came to me and were excited about something. That could make our relationship better. If you came to me and was excited about something. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what it is. I'm going to get excited about it. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear you out. At the very least, I'm going to hear you out. And if you were like, I would like you to listen to this. It's going to take three hours of our day. All right, babe. I'll give it a shot. What's mm-hmm. going to happen? I'm going to waste three hours of my life. I do that anyways. Every day. Right. By playing on TikTok or watching YouTube or watching a movie. Mm-hmm. If I if I can give you three hours of my time to do something that you are excited about, regardless of the reason, I am making my relationship better. Right. Because in the event that I'm like, oh my God, babe, I just, let's go buy electric bicycles and, and go ride around gardens and take pictures. And knowing that you don't like being outside, you don't want to be on a bike and fuck photography. But because I was excited when you were excited mm-hmm. and, and gave in when I'm ready for that and need you to reciprocate it, you're going to remember that. And, and hopefully, hopefully, right. you're going to be a good enough person to reciprocate that energy. Yeah. And we are going to grow because of it. It's an ebb and flow. Mm-hmm. 
Everything in a relationship is about compromise. I may not be into what you're into. If <clears throat> if you were like, okay, <laughs> I don't give a shit what you how you dress, as long as it's elegant, right? Because that that's I enjoy that. I enjoy you in your 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 yoga pants. It doesn't matter how you dress. If you if you came out looking super slutty, I'd have a problem with it. Obviously, because I don't enjoy that. I th- I don't. But it you know the other night you were like. Babe, I got all these dresses I'm super excited about. I don't know what color you want to wear. And I'm like, babe, I don't care what color you wear. I just want to see you in a dress. Yeah. I'm about it. Right. So how much money do you need? Like, w- what is this going to take to make this a thing? I'm excited. Like, let's let's get you some new clothes because you're excited about it. You spent hours looking for shit and, yeah. and like took measurements of your body because you have an hourglass shape. And um, it's hard to find clothes because of your figure. Um, because your proportion, the way that most men want their women proportioned... <laughs> Yes, <laughs> uh, but I'm excited for you. Yeah, I don't care if you get new clothes. I don't. I I don't have to wear that shit. I don't have to worry about the texture. Mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about anyway. I have to worry about how, how how long it's gonna take you to get dressed and undressed. Right. Because those are the important things, and how right. you're gonna look in public on my arm that matters to me. The rest of that is not important. Yeah. If you want advice on on like my opinion on clothes, I'm gonna always tell you, babe. You're the one that has to wear this because of the way that I am with my fabrics. If you bought me a T-shirt and it's not a specific type of fabric, I will never put it on. Textural issues. Right. So that's my response every single time. Now, if you were like, I want to know your opinion on how this will look on me, I got you, because we can have that conversation. But those are two very different conversations. Mm-hmm. Now, in the event that you came to me and you said specifically, this could better our relationship, I'm in. Right. I'm in. Our relationship is dope as fuck. We have an amazing relationship. Even when we're stressed out and having bad days, we have a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Communication is almost always on point. Right. We very rarely get underneath each other's skin. We don't annoy each other. We don't in- purposely create conflict. Mm-hmm. How in the fuck can we improve our relationship? I'm always looking for ways. So am I. And so am I. And we right. read and we're, we're always getting book advice, especially in Patreon, because the people on Patreon are definitely hooking it up with the book suggestions. Go ahead. I just want to throw in, I get excited when I learn something new and I implement it and you have a very positive reaction right. about it. Right. When you're like, damn, where'd you learn that? Yep. That is one of the dopest feelings I've ever felt. Right. Because our relationship is improving. Right. Why wouldn't you want your relationship to be your sanctuary and your peace? And this is going to keep us from being at each other's throats every day. Dope. You're the person I want to be with. Let's make this work. We got another Patreon. Oh, hell yeah. What are we up to now? A hundred and almost 30. So, guys, we're going to plug the Patreon real quick. If you 130? are 130? Yeah. If it was you, 118 <clears throat> like two days ago. Yep. If you guys are not part of the Patreon, you are truly missing out. We have built a community over there. Um, no, no, no. We are part of a community over there because the people that go to Patreon do so because they find value and then we connect with them. We just show up. <laughs> like, right. It's a community because of how everybody interacts. Right. We can pop in and say whatever we want to say when there's no interaction from anybody else. That's just us speaking. Yep. The community comes from you guys. Yep. And we we have, we do exclusive content. We do. We do live streams. Although this this week has been slow with content because of this, but we are we are doing the thing over there, and, and it it's worth it. If you guys find value in what we're doing here, you will absolutely find value in the community on Patreon because there's more of us. It's not just you and I. There is a whole community of like minded people over there, and you're not getting trolls. Yep. You're not getting hate. You're not getting bullshit over there because everyone that's over there has the same viewpoints. Mm-hmm. So if if what we're doing is something that you find value in, you need to look at the Patreon. You also get more attention from us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you're on Patreon, you are funding this. Yeah. So in return for your donations or your contribution, contribute, contribute, um, contribute, contributions, contributions. Yeah, we both struggled on contributions. that Contributions. <laughs> in return, you get our undivided attention. Yeah. So the best when, that we can give it. Right. Yeah. So when we see an email and it's from somebody in Patreon, you get our attention before anything else. Right. And and those emails also get sped up because we read them for Patreon instead of YouTube. Right. When there's Patreon only content, that's where that Patreon email goes. Yep. So the whole world is not hearing your business. It's the people who are like you who pay right. to be a part of a community that everybody is building. Who also may be able to give you advice that because is true. they do. Those the people in that group are are helping each other. Mm-hmm. And we all know each other. Like at yeah. this point we know most of everyone's stories, which is super dope, but And we know almost everyone by <clears throat> first name. Yep. So with that being said, check out the Patreon group if you're into that. If you if you like what we're doing, it, it's worth it. It's 10 10 to 15 dollars a month depending on the tier that you get. 
Um, the the $10 tier does not get access to the live streams, but it does get the extra content. Yeah. So um, the live streams are, are nice, though, because we do spend an hour to two hours every Friday night just bullshitting with people. And in the event that we do start doing live calls one-on-one, -on -one, that kind of shit, it'll be offered to Patreon way before it gets offered to YouTube. So. All right. Holy derail. We're still in an email. That's we twice are. now that that's happened. Trying to make clear that he wasn't the one for him, that I wasn't the one for him. Now, let me back up a little bit. We were only dating for seven months, so still still a fairly new relationship. Yeah, y'all, it's very, very new. It is. Walking away from somebody at seven months is nothing. Especially if you met seven months ago when you started dating. Yep. <clears throat> no foundation. You're not losing nothing. No, no, you're not. You had you had seven months to hang out with yeah. somebody. You're going to remember their face for probably a year and a half. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. Yep. In 10 years, you're not even going to recall that person. Unless they were super impactful in like a traumatizing way. Right. Or in a good way. If you're in a relationship for seven months and they help you grow as a person, and then you just happen to go down different paths. You could still remember that person for a positive impact. Yeah. I'm just saying based on this email and the tone, I'm saying it's a negative one. Yeah, I agree. All right. So we were only dating for seven months. So still a fairly new relationship, but already with many challenges that were un we were unable to resolve. Not with a lack of effort on my part. I remember you saying in an episode, you can't change your partner, and I do agree, but somehow I'm missing the mark of what I can be doing to see results. What do you mean see results? See results in you as a person or see results in your relationship? We said that you can't change your partner, that you can only change you. So if, right. you, if you become the best version of you, your partner should reciprocate that. And if they don't reciprocate that, it means that they don't care enough about you to become better. Right. They're not your person. Right. So she's, I think, I believe that she's asking that... Uh, at what point does she realize that she can no longer change who she is to make her partner want to change? Okay. Seven months and him walking away is a good thing. Yeah. Him going, you know, you're trying to change me. Mm -hmm. And it, seven months, I don't care if you were in love, if he was willing to walk away that easily, it wasn't there. He's not right. the one. He's not. Yeah. A dude Se who's seven months, you're still in the honeymoon phase. Yeah. You're still like doing it like rabbits. Like mm -hmm. you, you should be excited for each other and like fawning over each other and like. That's a thing. I've tried to look at myself and be the woman that communicates well and treats others, especially my partner, with respect and understanding. But at the, but at the end, I kind of just realized he doesn't want to change or grow. And I don't think if I was the most incredible woman on earth, he would want to. Some people are okay with mediocrity. You need to remember that. Yeah. Some she needs people, to remember that. Some people are okay with mediocrity. Some, some people, people aren't. Some people are just okay with being bad people. Mm-hmm. There are people who do foul shit in the world and they go to bed and sleep peacefully at night. Yeah, I don't do mediocrity. I, I just don't believe in that. I believe that you should be trying to level up even if it's 1% every day. Whoop. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Just to give you a little idea of our short but struggling relationship so that maybe you can give me some helpful advice going into my next. We are both single parents. So oh, we were both single parents. So it wasn't easy finding time to get away from the kids. But it was very important to me. So right around the two-month mark, when we kind of fell into family dates, instead of us as a couple getting quality time together. Okay, I'm going to pause you right there. Two months into a relationship, you don't do family dates. No. No. You date somebody for a year. You go out, you plan dates. If your kids are at grandma's house, you can spend the night. Yeah. Past yeah. the one-year mark, if things are still going great and you have a solid foundation, then you can start doing family dates and introducing. Right. That's where you messed up. That's one of the points where you messed up. Yeah. Too yeah. soon. Lack of, lack of foundation. You don't know this person. Do not bring your child around them. Right. Yeah, you never know. He could have been a predator. Right. You got to be careful about who you bring around your kids. You really do. Even if there aren't a predator, you just brought somebody into their life that you've known for two months. Right. That could cause a bunch of turmoil, a bunch of trauma, and they're just going to leave. It's a regular Tuesday for you, and now your child's damaged for the rest yep. of their life. Yeah. No, you There's, have to be a lot more mindful in dating when it comes to having children. Right. But can you also, even without the kids involved, dating for a year before moving in together is not a big deal. No, a year not. is not a long time it's in the really grand scheme not. of your life. It's 1% mm -hmm. when you really think about it. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, assuming you live to 100, which is what I'm going for, bionic man over here. I want to have my brain to be transplanted into another body so I can live forever. I would still be with you. Yeah? Yeah. Be old all bionic and shit yeah like like the alita battle angel guys i was just thinking that <laughs> stop it get out of my head um her body was so pretty all the white and yeah <laughs> we um it, so one year is not a long time to date somebody it's not and if you can if you can get the time to do one or two dates a week mm -hmm. just dinner yeah kids go to grandparents whatever 
um, or neighbor babysitter, however you want to play that out. You can learn a lot in two to three hours mm -hmm. twice a week. For a year. Right. And say say you go say you go seven months mm -hmm. and you guys are just dating, staying the night every once in a while. The kids have not met each other. They you know, the, the other person has not met the kids. Mm -hmm. And then you want to have a play date. I was just thinking a play date. It's not a date. You guys aren't going to dinner. You guys are meeting at a playground so the kids can interact to see right. how they interact while you two sit on a bench. No kissing, no, no hugging. Right. No arms around each other, just sitting next to each other, having a conversation because now the mm -hmm. kids are interacting. You get to see the way these two are going to interact. Yep. If one of them is bully, if they've got bad habits, how the other person parents their child. You were just speaking my thoughts. There's Because it's 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 sense. Can't even call it common sense because common sense doesn't exist anymore. It is just sense. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to do that? I understand like the lust and like the excitement of everything being new and wanting to date and fawn and touch. Because and people are selfish. They want to fill the need of having somebody to love them. That's it. But they're not filling a need. They're giving themselves false hope and, right. and empty calories. Filling you're, a need. You're not being satiated at no. all. You you are you have a temporary situation that's going to lead to another temporary situation. It's going to lead to another temporary situation because you're not doing the work. Yeah. You're not putting the effort in to truly get to know this person. And it's okay if it doesn't work. Right. It, it really is. And if you're not sleeping together and you start off as friends, mm -hmm. you can have other friends and it be okay. And it not be a weird scenario where, you know, you're seeing someone and then seeing someone else. If you treat it as a friend where you're getting to know this person and you're trying to learn who they are as a person. Yeah. And you're doing the same thing with three or other, four other people. You're not crossing any lines. You're not cheating. You're not doing anything wrong. You're expanding your social group. Right. And in the event that you find one person that works and find 14 that don't, you didn't waste any time. You found the person that you need to be with and, and you can start making that work. I want to reiterate that selfishness. Like if you have children and you're jumping from relationship to relationship and you're moving all of these dudes in and that's selfish. Yeah. Your child is part of this equation. Just like when you're in a relationship with somebody and your thoughts and your choices impact somebody else, your thoughts and your choices are impacting your child. Absolutely. Don't be selfish when it comes to your children. I mean, do in certain aspects, like be selfish with that baby time. Be selfish with any amount of time you have with your children. But don't be selfish when it comes to moving men into the home two or three months after meeting them. Right. Obviously, we're not saying that this happened in this scenario. Right. She it's could have known this dude for a long time. We don't know. Broad statement. Right. All right, so they started doing coupled family dates instead of us as a couple getting quality time together. I tried to express that we needed that alone time to bond and grow and connect without the kids. <clears throat> he agreed, and we both agreed that we would plan two dates a month, each so one a week. That's not enough. Oh, okay, so it'd be four dates a month. They, he picks two, she picks two. Okay. That's acceptable. The plan didn't even work the first month. I planned my dates and he waited until the last day and then invited me over for a movie. I tried to let him know I was disappointed that we didn't get the second date in and he said he would do better next month. Was he an introvert? And it never happened. I don't know. No, I'm asking her that. Yeah. That's, that's something to, to take into consideration because some people like to be at home. Yeah. I, I do. I love going out and doing shit with you, mm -hmm. but we have to plan our outings while other people are at work to minimize crowds because of my PTSD. Right. So like... We know that, but if I didn't explain that to you when we first started getting together, you would have never known. We would have had a whole bunch of slew of issues, and you would have had false expectations that I couldn't provide. Right. We do go out. like We, we plan on going to musicals, and we go to movies, and we do things at nighttime too, but that takes a lot longer for me to plan because I have to mentally work myself up to doing that. That's a me thing. It's not a you problem. That's a me problem, and I know that. But like when we go take pictures, we go during the daytime while everyone's at work and there's like 10 people walking around the garden and nine of them are employees. Like, Well, we also go super early in the morning. There's times where we're leaving the house at 530 or 6 o'clock. Right. That drive time, though. Yeah. <laughs> but it's to be there right when they open at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning right. so we can walk around for two or three hours. One, before it gets packed. Yep. And two, before the heat starts getting there. Mm -hmm. So pretty much they would each plan a date a week. So they went... She planned all of her dates for that month, and then he didn't plan any of them. Right. <clears throat> so when I planned the dates, he would always show up late. Oh, that's a problem. That is a problem. That's a huge problem. So <laughs> I hate that. 
I hate that. I hate it when somebody's <clears throat> late to anything. Doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. You showing up not on time, as far as I'm concerned, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Right. Because you never know what kind of traffic's going to happen. You may run out of gas. You could have a flat tire. Whatever the case may be, 15 mm -hmm. minutes early should right. eliminate enough window that you're not super late to anything. Mm -hmm. If somebody shows up to late, late to a date or to a job interview, it shows an overall lack of discipline on their part, and it yeah. shows you that you don't matter to them. I would have been there waiting for them to show up. They showed up late. I'd be yeah. like, all right, dope. <clears throat> so I'm heading out. You can get dinner by yourself. Yep. So you just wasted a time coming there. You made me wait. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to make you waste your time. Yep. I'm going to wait for you to show up. You know, you know Sorry, I'm 30 minutes late. All right, that's cool. Well, yep. I've eaten. I'll see you later. Yep. You know how many people have gone out to eat with us that try to get there before us? Mm -hmm. And they're like, how, how long have you been here? 30, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. <laughs> You know, ever since high school, I have lived by if you're on time. I mean, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And mm -hmm. if you're late, they're already gone. Yeah. I expect better. I, I, I hold myself to a standard. Mm -hmm. And if I hold myself to a standard, you better believe I'm holding the people that are valuable to me and like worth my time to a standard. Right. And when you fail to meet that standard, I will remove you like cancer. You're gone. And it's not even not. It's not illogical. It's not even. um. I can't think of the word. I'm just thinking stupid. It's not even stupid standards. They are very achievable standards that should be in place for anybody. Right. It's not like you're asking them to build a rocket ship to the moon. You're asking people to just be decent. Right. Be on time. Be courteous. He was even late to my birthday dinner <laughs> when we had a reservation and his own son's birthday. When I talked to him about being late was a boundary. When I talked to him about how being late was a boundary for me and how it made me feel like I wasn't priority a priority he turned it around saying he has adhd and that i need to be more understanding because punctuality is challenging for him if it was important to him it wouldn't be if it was important to him it wouldn't be a problem right if he had cancer and had to be at the hospital for a treatment he'd be there he would be there yeah for his survival yeah, that's a bullshit excuse. I, I, I have zero tolerance for people making a mental illness an excuse for anything. Right. If you, like, extreme cases are different. Obviously, mm -hmm. you can't even control your life in some cases. Right. I get that. But to just be like, oh, well, I have ADD, ADHD. Right. Fuck out of here with that. I have ADHD. You set alarms on your phone. Yeah. When I know I have to be somewhere, like, if I have to start getting ready to leave the house on time to where I need to be, I'm setting an alarm for that time. Yeah. And I'm stopping what I am doing, and I am getting ready. Mm-hmm. It Discipline. Same thing. Excuse. It doesn't sound to me like she's she's losing anything of value in any of yeah. this. So you're welcome. <laughs> so really just see what he has done. Mm -hmm. View it, it's all lack of discipline. He's I'm not gonna say he's a shitty human being. He could be a really great guy. He just lacks discipline and a lack of caring. Recognize that and don't settle for less. Right. He and could be a great guy, just not a great guy for you. Right. Nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm, I'm going to hit you with a different thought because mm. though that's valid, the, the dating before you move in together is the most exciting part of dating. Why do you say that? Because you get to miss the person. Do you, do you remember that courting phase? The text messaging constantly? Even when we were at work together, the, the text messaging across the room and like knowing that you were going home and I was going home and like, I'm not going to see you for another day or it could be two days depending on our work schedule and yeah. like... You know, what about the kids? If you're going to have the kids, it could be three days. And like, mm -hmm. when am I going to spend time with you again? And that excitement and the buildup and the chasing each other and the fawning and the lusting and like, that's exciting. Yeah. And if you can prolong that for a year before moving in, that's a year that you get to, to play that game. It's not a bad thing. I just, I, I enjoy that shit. I enjoyed yeah. that a lot with you. And we do it here. Like on days that you go help out at the shop or I leave, we're, we're constant communication with each other. We get to live those re moments yeah. or we get to relive those moments. I did not come out the way it was yeah. supposed to. I'll even sit on the patio for four or five hours and have you miss me. You do. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I'll come to the door. What you doing out there? Yeah. You know, just because I, I do miss you. <laughs> I think even though we live together, we can make it a point to not be in the same room together. Constantly. Yeah. So it goes on to say, I did try to be understanding, but asked him to make an effort. When he invited me to his sister's wedding at about the four month mark, I was excited to meet his family. When I arrived for the reception, I found him and his two children eating and joined them. As soon as I sat with the kids, he got up and said he was going to get us drinks. He didn't return for almost an hour, and I was stuck with all three kids, his and mine, cl 
cleaning up spilled food and messy faces, all while trying to maintain myself in a room full of his family that I've never met before. So it sounds like he was just looking for somebody to step in and be a mom so he yep. can do whatever the hell he wanted. Yep, he was looking for a babysitter. Mm-mm. That's the red flag. Yeah. I'd have left. Oh, yeah. I would have taken my child and left. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. If he didn't return with a drink, I'd have got him walked out the door. 15 minutes. And I'm shouting across the room, hey, what you doing? <laughs> we ain't playing this game. Yeah. You, you guys, your, the, the way that you value yourself as a person, mm -hmm. the, the self-worth, I, I, I couldn't get past self-esteem and that wasn't the right word. Gotcha. Your self-worth matters. And if you don't have it, and you're willing to let somebody step over you or step on you, and it happens in the first year of a relationship, it's just going to continue. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's not hard to be like, hey, I know my value. Right. The first instance of anything crossing a boundary, I'd be like, hey, this is a boundary for me. I'm letting you know we're still learning each other. I would just appreciate it if you didn't do anything that would fall into this category right. again. Yeah. That would be the only warning. If the same thing or something similar happened, happened again, I'm gone. Yeah. Happened. Speaking's hard. Yeah. It would be that one-time warning. Now say something totally left field happens, not related. You set another boundary. But if something happens repeatedly, that's a pattern. They don't care enough to change. Right. You would get the one warning. If it's under a year, we have, we're still building a foundation. You do it again, I'm gone. Right. Because you're, you're still learning each other. Right. And that's if expectations aren't laid out. Mm -hmm. Those boundaries are important. Right. And the, in the Dob sub, Dom sub community, which is going to read dumb sub when he does the titles because that's what it does, mm -hmm. there are hard limits. A hard right. limit is one that will never even be approached. Yep. When we were dating, when it actually became dating, we discussed those hard limits. Mm -hmm. We discussed them in our day-to-day -day lives. One of the things that I'm not okay with is you going to the bar. Right. Unless I'm with you. And it... it you can look at that however you want to look at it, whether it's from a point of protection, a point of, of distrust, a point of trauma, whatever the reason is, that is a hard limit for me. You knew that and agreed to it. Mm -hmm. That comes from dating. Right. If you don't have those multiple dates where you get to learn the, the ins and outs and the S's and O's for people, you're never going to know until that boundary gets crossed and then it's a problem. Right. Because nobody defined the expectations of the relationship and, and what was and was not acceptable to each other. Right. And it's okay. It is fucking okay to be like, that is a no zone for me. Right. And you doing that is a problem. And if you're willing to do that, knowing how I feel about it, I'm not going to be here. No, it's also on the person. If you're in the dating phase and someone says, I don't want you going to the bar as my woman, you can say, okay, then I'm not going to be your That's woman. It. You can't sit there and say, well, you can't control me, this, this, and that. You have to be okay with it. Yeah. Just leave. Yep. Go find a man who is okay with that. You can't force somebody to bend to your will just like they can't force you to bend to theirs. Yep. And if you're three or four dates in and you're not living together and you haven't committed in that way yet. You're not losing anything. Bye. You're not going to remember their name in three years. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. It's not hard. Date people who fit your criteria. Don't date someone to try and make them fit your criteria. I had introduced myself to his parents and siblings all on my own Ooh. and was completely, it, it was completely embarrassing. Okay, man. Let me tell you how this works. When you invite anyone to a group of people that have not met yet, it is your duty as the host to initiate conversation between people mm -hmm. and um, introduce. Right. In the event that you and I go out to dinner and I know the man but have never met his wife, it is his duty to introduce his wife to us. Right. It is my duty to introduce you to them. Right. Under no circumstances should a woman in an unfamiliar scenario be required to walk up to a group of people to introduce herself, especially if she knows no one else there other than the man. Yeah. This is basic gentleman code. I don't understand how this is even a thing. Right. I would have left out that scenario. I've been like, hey, this is a standard for me. Right. The fact that you didn't do it, like, I understand that you didn't know just going forward when you are with a woman this yeah. is proper etiquette. Yeah, I'd have pulled his ass aside immediately. Right. Like, I'm not staying for you to learn that, but just so you know, going forward, so you don't lose another woman, Yeah, you should implement that. How crazy is it that people don't know these things? It, I mean, it's how, just how people are raised. And how crazy is it that people are okay with being treated that way because right. they think it's okay? Mm -hmm. Stand up for yourself. You know, you don't have to leave someone shitty either. Like in that scenario, if we've been dating for six months and I went to a wedding with whomever I'm seeing 
and they didn't introduce me and it's been after multiple things i'd be like okay this is the last straw right going forward in your next relationships you should just kind of take a look at these things and maybe might want to grow this is why i'm leaving this is why i'm not going to be with you and i wouldn't shit on the person i wouldn't tell them that they're a bad person these are just kind of the things that you should take some constructive criticism right. on. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. Because you have your value. You know right. what you're worth. And if you can't meet my expectations of a partner, I'm going to find somebody who can. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. When you have two people that have value and know that they have value and know what they bring to the table, you're going to have a very different dynamic in the relationship. You're either going to have two people butting heads because that will happen. You're mm -hmm. going to get two people trying to be the alpha in the home that's going to create problems. Or you're going to have one person recognize that the other person is the alpha and they're going to fucking work together. But knowing that you both have standards means that you can't drop the ball because the other person is looking at you to hold those standards. Mm -hmm. it, it's not hard. I know that there are a lot of things that you expect of me as your man. Right. And I know that if I fail to do these things over a prolonged period of time, I'm not going to be your man anymore mm -hmm. because you know your value. Right. It's been explained. We've laid it all out on the table. We know these things. Mm -hmm. And whether that comes from courting or the dating process or just long in-depth conversations because we genuinely enjoy talking to each other, we know these things. I, I just, I, I don't know. That, that whole scenario just, it sounds like it was doomed from the get-go. Right. So after he came back, I let him know I was leaving and how embarrassed I was. I wouldn't have even. I, I'm going to. So, so he brought back the drinks after an hour and she dipped. Good. Right. Fucking yeah. good. In the event that, that that scenario happened, if you and I went anywhere together mm -hmm. and you didn't know anyone other than me, you would be on my arm the entire time we were there. Not because you wanted to be, because I want you to be. I don't want you to be around people that you don't know and feeling uncomfortable. You know me. Right. I'm going to be the most, most comfortable environment in that entire gathering because you know me. Right. In the event that you were like, babe, I'm tired. I want to sit down. Cool. We're, we are going to go sit down. Mm -hmm. You want something to eat? I, I, you know. It's this kind of scenario, sure, I'll go grab the plate, just stay right. here, whatever. But I'm going to introduce you to everyone at the party. I'm going to find the people that I think you're going to engage with the best mm -hmm. and introduce them first in case you decide you want to get involved in a conversation. Mm -hmm. But I'm not leaving you alone in a scenario like that because you're there for me. Right. You're not there because you want to be there. You're there because I invited you. Mm -hmm. It's also the kind of thing where if, like, it's you're a group of your people and they know that you're bringing me for the first time. Everybody is aware this is the first time I'm meeting everybody. Right. And you walk away from me, the dudes in that pot are going to be like, damn, he just left her alone. Mm -hmm. They're going to swarm. Yeah, absolutely. Because men are pieces of shit in situations right. like that, especially when they've been drinking. They're also going to be talking behind your back like, damn, he just walked away. I would have never done that yep. there. Yeah, that's it. Or they're going to come over and be like, oh, where'd he go? Yeah. I, I would have never done that to oh. you. I think that's pretty wrong. And now the negativity bias is starting. Right. Yeah. And then... And it, it could also be the kind of thing where another man jumps in and starts introducing me to everybody mm -hmm. else. Yeah. I've actually seen that play out mm -mm. at parties. Yep. That that whole scenario, and, and I mean what I said about men being pieces of shit yeah. in parties and groups like that, because as soon as they start drinking and the competition between men starts, things are not okay. Right. It's a pissing contest. It, it absolutely is, especially in young men. Yeah, yeah. Old, older men don't do it quite as much. We, a lot of us, a, a lot of older men are a lot more secure in themselves and, right. and they know their value. Like I said earlier, mm -hmm. younger men have a whole lot to prove. There's also a lot of testosterone going yeah. on in younger men. Yeah. I don't think it's testosterone. I think it's a need to self-validate. Self-validate? Yeah. Let, I don't let, know. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's see who, who's the alpha in this conversation right now. Let's see who runs this room. Let's. They always do it amongst themselves though. I don't like that. They don't do it against the ones who are tried and tested because they fucking know better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, so you know how like there's that one big dick lion, the head mm -hmm. of the pride. It's pecking order. Right. Only other lions who have a true confidence of being able to take down that guy are going to go after him. Yeah. The ones who just like, I want to like nip and bite and yeah. I'm the big one. They're going to fight amongst themselves like you're saying. Mm -hmm. So like those dudes that fight amongst themselves and try to take another dude's chick be like, oh, I would never do that to you. It's kind of like, in my mind, I'm envisioning like derpy peacocks. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, look at me, but oh, look at me. You want to know what went through my mind? What? Could you imagine us being in a scenario like that where for some reason we weren't together because we knew other people there and that pecking order was there and from across the room I looked at you and went like that and you just fucking left all of those dudes standing there trying to talk to you and I'd be like, to the guys. <laughs> 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 that scenario would absolutely play out that way. I would love it too. We've done it. 
We at, have done at, it, yeah. At mini golf. You haven't snapped at me. We no. do have a hand signal for... Right. If it's too loud or you can't hear the snap. Right, so... You were in an opposite part of the bar outside with the girls. I was in a conversation. Girls. I know yeah. you were. I waited until you saw me and I was like, I'm gonna fucking disrupt this whole shit. I looked And I up. did. And you <laughs> yeah. came and I was like, yes! We were getting our <laughs> drinks and we were standing there and I was, like, I was having a conversation with two ladies. I was having fun. And I looked up and we made eye contact and you did the thing. I was like, excuse me. And I grabbed my drink and I just walked away. <laughs> Mid-conversation. Mid-conversation, yeah. Yep. I can't remember if I was mid-sentence or not, but... I, I love that. Mid-conversation, I was like, oh, excuse me. Mm. Grab my drink and I was gone. I know women judge me for that, but it just it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good, too. And they can judge all they want because right. you, you, you have a signal, too, that would make me stop what the fuck I'm doing yeah. to come over there. Those, there's a reason for those things. Sometimes you just like showing off, though. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, dude, I love bragging. Yeah. I, I told you in, in episode 10 about my ego and the mm-hmm. way that we work. Oh, yeah. There's, there is, you don't need validation from your partner, but it's nice to have. Right. And the amount of people that we have email us that do not get validation from their partners and do not have a connection that see what we have, want what we have. Yeah. Knowing that other people see what we have and want what we have makes me want to show that shit off. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of that at all. And when people are like, oh, that's toxic or, oh, you must be weak minded or, oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You can call it whatever the fuck you want, bro. I got that. You don't. Yeah. And it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. And? And it's all consensual. Mm -hmm. There's no power in difference. I like to think I have more power than you in this relationship sometimes. Uh, I would say that 99% of the time you do. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. that. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, but that just plays against every <clears throat> narrative right. that hardcore feminists want to throw at us or, or oh, what's the term? This is really offensive and I can't say it. You might have to cut it, but I, the only thing I can think of for males who fight each other that aren't alphas is bootlickers. <laughs> <laughs> that's staying in. That's all I can think of. It, w- yeah, that's so funny. So the men who want to jump on here and bash me for appearance or whatever like try to take me down because you can't attack me intelligently so you have to go after my appearance and say well i would never have sex with you good i'd probably never have sex with you either every one of those men yeah who hear what we have Mm -hmm. and say i would never want that oh yeah you're full of shit bro right you you're just saying you would never want this because because you you know it's unobtainable for you because you don't want to push yourself and grow and be a better person to have this so it makes you feel more secure in yourself trying to convince yourself that you would never want this. Yep. It's just not feasible for you with your current mindset. We should continue with that email before we... We're reading an email. Turn, turn off this podcast. Okay. Was that too much? Was I too much just now? I, ooh. What? Mm. Let's just continue reading because we have food on the way. We're in the middle of a podcast. Okay. I'm, I'm insecure mm. in what I just said No, now. you don't be. Okay. Don't be. Oh. Mm. Oh, you mean it like that. I love that. Oh, Thank you. Oh, man. All right. So. That's such a power play in what? my mind. That whole scenario that happened that night that we were at the bar and all that went down. Yeah. There's, there's, it's one thing for, for somebody to know that you're committed to somebody. Yeah. It's another to see you walk away from an entire group of people that you are engaged with just to go be next to your person. Yeah. No one else in the world matters. Yeah. No one. When it comes down to it. This is that true ride or die that people fucking talk about and rap about and make movies about. And, right. And instead of bragging about it, which we're doing right now, I'm yeah. fully bragging right now. We don't normally do that. No, we don't. But we can show people at any given moment exactly how much we mean to each other and how I th- if it came down to it, I would burn this entire fucking building down. And- oh, man. All right. I'm probably cutting a lot of that out. I understand. <laughs> After he came back, I let him know I was leaving and how embarrassed I was. Later, he apologized and said that it was his sister's day and he had to be her support. And since he was part of the wedding party, he had a lot of wedding obligations. Then he shouldn't have invited you. Right. Like, if if I can't give you my attention while you're present, bro, you said you were leaving for drinks. Yeah. I'm not even going into my other thought. You said you were leaving for drinks. That's not a wedding obligation. I arrived you said, hang on, babe, let me get you a drink and disappeared for an hour. Right. If it was a conversation of my sister's having a meltdown, the groom is doing whatever, my mom's losing her mind, can you watch the kids while I take care of this? Yeah, can you watch the kids? Not, not I'm going to get you a drink and just disappear, so you have to watch the kids. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Foul. 
Okay, so I told him if he knew he would be busy, he shouldn't have invited me. No, oh, it sounds like she knows what she's doing. Right, especially to such a big event where I'd be meeting family and I wasn't expecting to be the nanny while he drank beers with his dad and brothers. He apologized and promised it wouldn't happen again. And after about six months into a relationship, we were struggling to have intimacy. Girl, you are strong for staying another six months. Yeah. That that, that, that would have been it <clears throat> for me. Yeah, that he wanted a babysitter. Right, after the missed dates and not planning and being late to everything that I planned... And then you desert me at a wedding saying it was obligations when I can see you across the room getting drunk with your dad. I understand that you love him and you want things to work, but <laughs> laying it all out like that, it sounds ridiculous that you stayed another six months after everything that's already happened prior showing that you're not a priority to him. There's a difference between being in love with somebody and having love for somebody. And right. you can be with somebody for seven months and have love for them and not be in love with them. Right. And unless you can understand the two and, and differentiate the two in your brain... That's where that comes into play. Yeah. Because you could have had love for that man and not been in love with him. I am in love with you. Mm -hmm. If I just had love for you and was not in love with you, our relationship would be very different. Right. You guys need to recognize these things. It's not, you know. Right. Like, I am willing to do things for people out of love, but that doesn't mean that I need to spend the rest of my life with you. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Mm -mm. Okay. Going on. After about six months in the relationship, we were struggling to have intimacy. Not just sex, but quality time. Moments alone to just be together. There was always someone or something distracting him. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys couldn't even make it through the first two months of dating properly. I mean, I don't what you expected to happen in that scenario. Right. Even when we would watch a movie, he would be playing with the cat, and I would ask him to please let the cat go because I wanted us to hold hands or just be close and focus on one another. And he got so mad and said I was too clingy and that if I can't handle the cat... That was my issue. Anytime I try to communicate. Stop, stop. So in that scenario, the answer is to go, wait a minute. I want, I want your attention. It's not about you playing with the cat. We are supposed to have quality time right now. Right. If you want to play with the cat, you can do that as much as you want after mm -hmm. the movie's over. Right. I want your undivided attention for the next two hours. We arrange for the kids to be out of the house. Yep. We have a babysitter. They're gone for the next three hours for dinner with grandma. Right. We plan for this. This has nothing to do with you playing with the cat. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. The kids are finally asleep. That is pure deflection. That is. That is a manipulation tactic. Um, you guys really need to pay attention to what people say to you non-verbally. Right. Not all communication is going to be verbal. And sometimes what people are not saying is really what they're fucking saying. Right. He told you that you're too clingy. And, and he's basically saying that you are jealous of the cat. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is that you don't give me enough attention and I'm asking for two hours of your time to be intimate with me, mm -hmm. to just exist in my world for two fucking hours and instead of giving me the courtesy to give me your undivided attention for two hours, you would rather play with the cat. Right. So it's not that I'm jealous of the cat. I'm telling you that your actions are showing me that I do not matter to you. Mm -hmm. That's the conversation that needs to be had. It doesn't have to be in that tone. Right. You can absolutely verbalize that in a non-threatening, non- um, demeaning way. I, I kept wanting to say non -attacking. Dem diminishing, demeaning, non-demeaning way. And that conversation could be had. Mm -hmm. Instead, he changed the situation to manipulate you and make you feel like you're the fucking problem. Right. You're the bad guy here. Yeah. This is not my fault. This is a you thing. You should never go to your partner with a problem and allow them to turn it around on you. Right. You can have conversations about things that bother them as well mm -hmm. because now you guys are in a position of conflict. Right. Or in a debate. Yeah, it could also be a conversation <clears throat> of he did this to hurt your feelings. You have to hear why he behaved that way. Right. And if it's something that you caused, that's just a chain reaction between the two of you. Right. And that's a conversation that can be had. Right. But do not allow somebody to flip the shit that's mm -hmm. going on around and make it a you problem when you are trying to express your feelings and emotion towards what's happening. Right. Your emotions and feelings are valid. It doesn't matter what the scenario is. If you are feeling something... You have the right to feel that. Mm -hmm. They may not agree with it. They may see the situation completely different than you. But the proper response for any of you listening that do that is to go, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was making you feel that way. Now that I see your point of view, I will try to do better. However, and then you can have your conversation about what you need to have the conversation about. But taking that extra second to go, okay, I realize what I just did made you feel that way. And I'm sorry. Right. You have validated their emotions. It's been addressed. 
unless they're going to harp on it for the next 45 minutes, the conversation technically could end there. Mm -hmm. But you guys should have a conversation about how you can move forward. What do you need from me moving forward to make you not feel that way? That could be a very logical next step to that conversation. It's not hard because now you have the opportunity to tell me how you're feeling, how I made you feel that way. And now I'm asking you, what can I do in the future to make you not feel that way going forward? Mm -hmm. It's really not hard. I understand that when things are emotional and you're angry that and you're feeling defensive, you may not be able to think of that in the moment. Right. It's harder to think that way. Right. But if you practice that mm -hmm. and you start implementing that every single time something comes up, you're validating, you're asking for how to move forward mm -hmm. and you are not flipping things around and telling somebody that the way they're feeling is, is not logical. Right. I don't know. <clears throat> and then afterwards, you can even explain to them like, hey, I am sorry. The way that I saw that situation was X, Y, Z. I was not trying to make you feel however. And now that I know that you felt that way, I'll do better. Mm -hmm. And then you're never going to argue about that shit again because you've def diffused the situation. You know how they feel. They know you know how they feel. And right. if you're a good person, you're going to try to be better next time. Yeah. Anytime I try to communicate, whether it was about needing intimacy, needing him to be punctual, or just needing even the smallest thing to make me feel like he was in this relationship with me it would be my issue. So with all that being said, is this my issue? You were dating the wrong guy. She said, what yeah. I, was I dating the wrong guy? Yep. Yes. Yeah, you absolutely were. This is not a you issue. He showed you he was not punctual. You cannot then ask him to be punctual. He's already shown you who he is as a person. Yeah. He already showed you he doesn't care to be punctual. Yeah. I, we only see a small portion of the relationship. Right. We only know what's in the email. But from what's in the email, he's selfish. Right. He's not looking for a quality partner. He's looking for somebody to take care of his kids. To, mm -hmm. to basically just let him do what he wants to do and not, not bitch and complain. Right. He's not looking for a partner. If he was, he would be working to do better when you, can, when you bring things to his attention. Yeah. It, it, he's just not for you. That's all there is to that. He yeah, might be the it. right person for somebody else, but for you, absolutely not. She says, how do I attract the kind of man I can communicate with and not feel like it's all my issue when something is important to me? Find better men. You need to find a better man and yeah. you need to pay attention to how he communicates. Yeah. If you've had multiple conversations about the same thing and his point of view is not changing, you need to move on. Yeah. You he's to, shown you he's not willing to communicate. You need to date. You need to spend time dating and right. not just jumping into long-term relationships and moving in with people. Right. Don't don't go from one person be like, "Okay, we want one date together. You're you're all of my focus. Right. I am focused on spending the rest of my life with you because we had one date together." Right. No, it should takes time. And if you're financially capable of supporting yourself mm -hmm. and you are not in need financially to move in with somebody you can prolong that as much as you want right you guys can come over and come and go as you please if you both got your own places mm -hmm. you don't need the financial aid so if you don't need the financial aid and you can do it all on your own there's no reason for somebody to move in or for you to move in with somebody else because right. you're doing it you can prolong that dating as long as you can and if things aren't right you can move on to the next person until you find that right person do not settle for mediocrity. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Find a man who's got his shit together right. and, and invest your time. And you know, if you are struggling and you need someone to help supplement bills, get a roommate. Yeah. Don't go on a date with someone with the intent of them moving in to help you financially and then try to force a relationship right. to work. No, I agree. Uh, where do I find a gentleman and how do I become the woman deserving of a gentleman? You got to do the work. You do have to do the work. You, you need to, to work on being the best version of you that you can work on your communication skills, work on your future, right. have goals, set set like a five-year plan. You really need to, to start working on building mm -hmm. your life. And part of that is setting boundaries and recognizing what is unacceptable to you yeah. and not letting people cross those boundaries. Yeah. You were with this man for seven months and he showed you repeatedly that he did not care about you or prioritize you in anything. So, and here's an easy exercise for all of you listening that are single or that are possibly going to be single, you need to get a notebook and you need to write down all of your hard limits, things that you will absolutely unequivocally not accept in a relationship. <clears throat> write it down. Think about it. Like truly think about it. That list shouldn't be one or two things. It should be like 15 to 20. Yeah. And then as you start dating people and you have conversations and you find things that you're not okay with, add that shit to the list, but memorize that. It's no different than having core values. Um, you, you figure out what matters to you, what you're not willing to accept from a partner. And then when you start dating people, you can even tell them if you've got that list memorized, like mm -hmm. you can drop these bombs during a date and be like, these are things that are hard limits for me that I'm not okay with. And if you can't meet these expectations, 
You can just tell me now and we can part ways. Right. It's not even a shitty thing. Right. You don't We're, even have to be aggressive about it. Say, like, right. look, if these don't line up with what you want, tell me. Yeah. So we don't waste each other's time. Mm -hmm. And you can even start that conversation with, like, what are your hard limits? What are your goals and what are your hard limits? What are things that you will not accept for from a partner on your behalf? Yeah. Let them go first. You may find that you have a whole lot of things together on that list and you could be like, me too. You know, it me might, too. It oh, could, that's a good one. Didn't think about that. Let me add it to the list. That would even be a more passive way to approach that conversation. Yeah. Because if you sit down with someone and just start hitting them with your hard limits, they're going to be thrown off. Yeah. And be like, damn, like that's kind of aggressive. Even if you're not meaning it in an aggressive way, because you are sitting down and put, setting your boundaries and it's unexpected to them, they could, mm. could make them off kilter a little bit. Right. If you sit down and said, what are your hard limits? What are things that are disrespectful in your eyes? Yeah. Not only will they be more apt to open up, like you said, you could be crossing off things that already answer your question. So that's right. not even going to be a point of conflict. Yep. And then you, you may find that there are things that you vehemently disagree with. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we had that discussion about the bar, for example, on our first date and you were a bar goer, right. we would have never made it past the first date because I'm not going to ask you to not go to the bar. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. You're just not going to do it with me. Right. Because I know my value. I have self-worth. I have hard limits. And I'm not going to be with somebody that's not willing to respect those boundaries. I did go to the bar when you and I first talked. <clears throat> right. Talking. Before we had that discussion. Though. Right. But I want to point that out. I would go to the bar with people from the shop. Mm -hmm. It would be like a shop outing. Right. It's not like I was going to meet people. I was going to hang out with people. Right. It was a social thing for me. But I was staying out until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And it wasn't like an every Friday or Saturday night thing. I think I did it two or three times. In like a six month time span. Yeah. And it got to the point to where you and I were getting pretty serious. And that's when you hit me with, this makes me uncomfortable. If we're going to continue doing this, I need you to consider my feelings in this. Right. And that was the conversation. It wasn't, you need to stop going. We're not dating anymore. It's when you do this, it makes me feel X, Y, and Z. Please take my feelings in consideration. Right. Because had you, had you not taken my feelings in consideration and been like, I don't care. I'm going to go anyways. Right. You've shown me. My feelings don't matter in that scenario. And that's something that is, it's an absolute no for me. Mm -hmm. it, that's just what, the way it is. And if, you know, if, if the roles were reversed and I was a drinker and you were like, I am not okay with this, I would have a decision to make. Right. I either want to have my relationship or I want to go to the bar. Mm -hmm. I, if I can't do both, I have to choose one. And if I chose the bar and you chose to walk away, that's your right. prerogative. You have every right to do that. It's also, if you choose to pick your relationship over going to the bar, you then can't get at that, get mad at that person for right. setting that boundary. Right. Because you accepted that boundary and made the choice to stop going. So if you truly don't want to stop going to the bar and drinking, that needs to be made known. Right. Because in three to five years, when all of a sudden you have all of this resentment built up because you're not allowed to do what you've always wanted to do, it's a choice that you made. Yep. These conversations are taboo. That that whole dynamic between you and I, me telling you that that I don't want my woman going to a bar. Right. Is toxic masculinity mm -hmm. it's me controlling you i've never once said you can't right i'm telling you that you can do whatever you want i'm just not going to be with you if that's what you choose to do right the, essentially that's what i'm saying i didn't word it that way but that was what i was saying in the moment mm -hmm. you've, you've had similar situations i'm not i'm not not posting thirst traps mm -hmm. i'm not trying to get attention on the internet i'm not liking thirst traps i'm not fucking on on girls pages And i've never asked you to not do that right because it's respectful yeah i i know that if i was doing that and i was giving women attention on the internet you'd be like well why aren't you giving me attention yeah i don't want it i don't want that attention to go somewhere else that attention needs to go where it needs to go mm -hmm. to make sure that this is taken care of and everyone is happy right so i made a decision to do that. you didn't have to ask me Mm -hmm. But if in the event that you were like, hey, I really have a problem with the way that you're you're acting on Instagram, I would delete my Instagram. Right. Well, I would delete my personal one. Obviously, the business ones would have to exist, but mm -hmm. I would not interact on Instagram at that point. Right. We have um we have okay, perfect example is our Instagram, sinful images, our Instagram is mm -hmm. our Instagram. We both have access to it. Right. It's a shared account. Not because one of us did something wrong. It's not like a Chris and Chris. It is a shared photography account to share our shit. Mm -hmm. I am not engaging with anyone on a personal level, period. Mm -hmm. Which is why I like TikTok so much, because unless you follow somebody back, they can't interact with you. Right. I had somebody message me on TikTok, and I responded, and you were like, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm like, cool, done. That's it. It's the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, I got to the point where I even stopped reacting or speaking to them in comment sections out of respect. Mm -hmm. If somebody messages me on TikTok with the way that they've changed the algorithm or I follow them, I tell them to email us. Yeah. You can email us at to be better co 
at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Not me, us. Right. I make it very clear that you're going to see everything that comes through that email because I'm not getting caught in that trap. Yeah. You got nothing to say to me. You're going to come in here and be like, hey, you're hot. I'd be like, babe, babe, come get this. I, yeah. Uh uh. Nope. No, bitch. You are not trapping me in that. No. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Yeah. I don't do that either. There was a point where. TikTok added a new feature where anybody can message right. you. I turned that shit off immediately. Right. I didn't turn it off immediately. And I was confused. Like, why the hell do I have all these direct messages? Right. And a lot of it was from dudes. And I was like, no, we're not playing this game. Yep. I turned all of that shit off. I deleted everything. I am not going to be in a situation, even if it was someone we both followed on TikTok, we are not having a private conversation. Right. I am not going to be put in a position like, oh, damn, well, your woman messages me. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. we could be having the most polite conversation it could have just been like hey i like what you guys did with the podcast room dope yep. man thanks yeah you can do that in the comments so you don't need to message right. me for that there's no reason for you to message me for that you can yeah. say that in the comments of the video mm -hmm. publicly where everyone can see your intentions yeah you know i've had men in the comments saying i wish i could direct message you but i know you don't follow me yeah, I'm yeah like, there's a reason for that i was like you can email us to be better code gmail.com mm -hmm. Never hear from them right, again. Right, because they had nefarious intentions. Right. Intentions. In, intentions. Right. Yeah. That's foul. Yeah. We're and not you, playing that game. Yeah, me either. And mm -hmm. you know, I said this before and people are like, that's weakness. It's not weakness. This is not weak. I am no. not going to put myself in a position to deal with temptation or any type of integrity loss or any kind of issues that, that could harm my integrity. I it's know I said integrity a couple times, but that's the only way I can right. think to word that. It's not even temptation. I don't ever believe that you're going to be in a position ever where you're going to look at another woman with lust. No, I got what I need. Right. So it's not even temptations. It's people talk. Right. People will lie to break down somebody else's character. Yeah. So say you go to the bar with two of your buddies and you're just drinking, watching a game. You're well known in our town. Oh, yeah. Someone could be like, Hey, he's down at the bar with X, Y, and Z, and then it's gonna be telephone. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's back to me. I saw your man at the bar. Yeah. And he's with X, Y, and Z, and this girl came over. Or so and so told me that they saw your man at this bar with X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You should check your man. Yeah. No, we ain't doing that. Mm -mm. It, Why put yourself in a position right. to where you could be look like where you could be framed to be do something that you're not? Right. And, and other people's intentions don't affect my integrity. Right. If somebody is into me, if somebody thinks that I'm, I'm the hot shit <clears throat> and they want to try to engage with me, mm -hmm. their integrity, knowing that I'm with you, is right. compromised. Not mine. Mm -hmm. My response to that scenario is what's going to compromise my integrity. Right. And in a bar scenario where I know that people are drinking mm -hmm. and I'm well known, if somebody did that shit, like, mm -mm. right, babe. Somebody just approached me at the bar. I'm on my way home. Be there in ten minutes. Yep. I'm good. Yeah. I, I'm covering all bases. Yeah. I'm not leaving with them. I'm not engaging with them in a conversation. I will politely thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. It was good seeing you. Have a great night. Yeah. I'm going home to my wife. Yeah. I'm leaving. Yeah. It's the same thing on the internet too. Right. Like we don't have random people adding us on Facebook and starting up conversations. Yeah. There has never been an instance where I'm like, oh, who's Becky? Right. Oh well, she added me on Facebook three months ago, and we're friends now. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. that's not how nope. that works no. no we don't have random <clears throat> messages on instagram from people who like our photos there's no opposite sex new friendships forming on the internet right new, unacceptable new friendships new friendships yep. there are people you've been friends with since you were a child mm -hmm. i am in no position to be like you can't talk to her anymore right but every one of those women know about you and every one of those women are like i can't wait to meet her right and i've told you that my friend april from california flat mm -hmm. out was like she seems like a fun badass chick she's like i cannot wait to meet her right and you know i'm stoked to meet friends in your life right. i don't care if they're male or female i know your quality of character right the people that you have in your life i know are good people because yeah. you don't settle for less but i also don't have those conversations and then five weeks later be like oh by the way I have those conversations immediately and come right. home and be like, oh, I'm talking to my friend April in California. Yeah. She said, blah, blah, blah. I'm not hiding shit. Right. I'm not. Yeah. I, I don't want to have any seeds of doubt mm -hmm. sown, which is why we don't do the divorce game, which is right. why we don't threaten to leave each other, which is why when, when tensions get high, one of us is okay with walking out of the room for a minute and regaining mm -hmm. our composure and coming and sitting back down. Yeah. These things are healthy. Yeah. And feeling the way that you feel is necessary. Your emotions are set to guide you. If something's not right, that's and your, your emotions saying, are going, hey, this isn't right. Pay attention. You fucking listen to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know.
when it comes to any type of social media, I am not entertaining any man that I do not know. Yeah. So if a man messages me and like, hey, how's your day going? You're either never getting read or you're getting deleted. Yeah. I have a private Instagram that's separate outside of the sinful images. And that is an Instagram related to piercing. Right. Um, weightlifting, some photography, whatever. If you are not messaging me in regards to pricing for piercing or interested in a tattoo, I'm not reading your message. Right. Same. Or I'll read your message. If you're complimenting one of my photos and you want to direct message me, I'll read your message and I'll heart react it. That's yeah. it. We're not having a dialogue. I, I'm not even heart reacting most of the comments. I will leave motherfuckers read. I have yeah. four Instagram accounts. Two of them are business. One is personal. One's photography. Mm -hmm. And then I have our Instagram. Right. Our Instagram is the only one that I am logged into consistently. The yeah. only time I go to the other Instagrams is if I get a message or a notification and I want to clear the notification. Mm -hmm. Um, my personal Instagram, I get Nicole and Tim sending me stupid reels. Like that's the account yeah. that we send reels to, but I literally use that account just for them. I rarely even post things on there because right. we, I have so many other Instagrams that I need to pay attention to because yeah. of, of business and like our joint account. And I got to be honest, using the, the joint Instagram and only the joint Instagram is a lot easier for me because I don't have to worry about the other ones. Right. People that are relevant have my phone number. Yeah. And if you don't have my phone number, you're not fucking relevant. You don't have access to me. Yeah. You know, I find it really sketchy when I hear people in relationships going, oh, yeah, this random dude messaged me three months ago and now we're friends and my man doesn't know about it. Yeah. So that's we, sketchy. Can we have that discussion? Like you don't need to be making new friends. In my opinion, of anybody in the opposite sex when you're in a relationship on the Internet. When dudes, random dudes reach out to you on the Internet, especially women, it's because you're attractive and they're trying to get in there. Right. You don't need new friends when you're in a relationship from the internet. From opposite sex. From the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. You know, I really, I don't entertain anybody on the internet. Yeah. For I don't the most, have the energy. For the most part, I don't either. The only time I really engage with people is if like, there's like a heartbreaking story that they reach out to tell us because that does happen. Right. Um, or it's. But it's related to the business. Right. Or it's business related. It's not on a personal level. I, we have, you and I have friends that are mutuals on mm -hmm. Facebook that are starting to add me. And they're all in a list. I'm not accepting any, oh, any yeah. of that. I have I no reason. That game. Yeah, I don't I don't know you. Right. And like as far as I know, my woman doesn't know you. She's never once mentioned you to me. So why mm -hmm. are you trying to add me? Like right. you, you know what I mean? Like it's just not a thing. And the the friends that we have that are mutual friends that have have, you know, whether they're male or female that have a partner, mm -hmm. I will engage with them because I know they're together. Like right. I, I will have that friendship. But in the event that, that friendship breaks apart and start, you know, things might become different at that point because mm -hmm. now I don't know your intentions. You know what I mean? Like, right. and, and, and that is a thing. Um, I saw something on the internet. Go ahead. Cause this is going to change the subject. Well, well, it's not, but I was going to say, so we are friends with couples on Facebook. Yep. I only deal with the woman. Right. I only deal in with those relationships. Man. So I much am, so, so much so that I asked Evan instead of Jackie, if you guys could go to Salem for a weekend, I've right, been friends yeah. with Jackie for five years. And that conversation went to her man. Right. How would you feel about the girls going to Salem for a weekend? He's like, I'm sure she would love that. I'm like, cool, right. let's make that happen. And it's I don't not even need to a, talk to her. It's not even a gatekeeping thing. Nope. It's out of her respect. Yep. Because if that relationship ends, there's no need for me to be his friend. That. Yep. Exactly. There's no need for that. You know, if we have friends and they're a couple and we brought them up, so I'm going to use them as an example. And if Jackie's blowing you up for six hours straight on a Saturday night, I'm having a problem with yeah. that. Yeah, I would too. Like, unless it's fitness related, you guys are talking about CrossFit, right. whatever. If she was sending me updates on Evan at a CrossFit meet, that's right. a very different conversation than her going, hey, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And there's going to be people that are like, that's unhealthy. That's mm -mm. toxic, blah, blah, blah. You can call it whatever you want. My fucking relationship is intact and happy. Right. There is no need for me to be talking to somebody else's man about anything. Right. Unless like I'm planning a surprise party or he's planning to propose. We do not need to be having conversations to get to know each other on a personal level because you're dating my best friend. Right. That's mm -mm. it. Yes, exactly right. I feel exactly the same way. That's inappropriate to me. I saw a conversation on the internet that said, um, when you're... When the person that you are entertaining knows more about your marriage than your partner knows about them, you're cheating. Yes. And I was like, damn, that is a very elegant, elegant, elegant way to mm -hmm. say that. Because, I mean, at what point is crossing the line? Right. I personally am uncomfortable with people coming to me about their relationship in my real life. Mm -hmm. I, will, I, will, I will hear them. People right. need people. I do have people that I love 
And if somebody I love comes to me and says, hey, this is going on, I need advice, I'm going to listen. And mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen intently. And I'm going to give the best advice I can give because I know they're not doing it for me to get involved in their relationship. They truly need an ear. Right. I'm down for that. But if you're coming to me to complain about your marriage and you're not willing to change anything and you just need to vent, I don't really care about that. Like I'm not a I don't need to hear that. Right. I I got enough problems. Like the Mm -hmm. last thing I need is to take on your bullshit. If you're coming to me because you need help. Yeah, we're here for solutions. Yeah. That's it. We're not here to complain. Yep. Yep. I I look at I look at people who complain without trying to make solutions as Mm -hmm. nothing more than whining about their life. Right. And I don't have time for that. I have other shit that I could be doing right now. I don't need to spend two hours listening to you fucking complain. That's that pity me. Yep. That's a pity. Yeah. It's pity me control drama. That's exactly what it is. I want to jump back to what you just said about crossing the line when you have a friendship that knows more about your marriage than your marriage knows about that Mm -hmm. friendship. For me, that falls in the line with having new friends on the internet that your partner doesn't know about. Right. Yeah. If you're working at a new job. And Paul knows more about your husband than your husband knows about Paul. Yeah, it's cheating. You have a problem. Yeah. That's emotional cheating. You're divulging things to Paul that you can't have a conversation <laughs> with your husband about. Right. When it's related to your husband and your marriage. Yep. Mm-mm. That also shows that you, you, you lack the ability to properly communicate with your partner. Right. Because if you feel more comfortable telling a stranger about your life than your partner, it means that you don't feel emotionally safe. Mm-hmm. You know their communication style does not mesh with yours and you have not done the work to figure out how they communicate. Right. Therefore, you're still butting heads and fighting and not talking. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot that tells me in that scenario. Right. This is why I want to have phone calls with people, Mm -hmm. like Zoom calls, because you and I could, could hype that chick up. Right. Like there's so many positive things that we could tell that woman about how to improve her life And when we have people who send emails that are like, he says, I'm not willing to change. Mm -hmm. And we can then pick apart why he's not willing to change and and how they're not able to communicate. I really think that we could affect change in people. Like couples coaching. I just don't know if I can dedicate that much time of my life on top of the businesses and the podcast and the TikTok and everything, the kids and the school and everything else we got going on. It's a lot. To really do that. If this ever gets to a point where we're making thirty to $40,000 a month between YouTube and TikTok, Mm -hmm. I would would quit everything and full-time coach. And I would be okay with it. Yeah, me too. One, one, one hour, one client. We'd every be able to dedicate day. our life to it. Yeah. And it would be super easy to do. Yeah. But I, I just don't, I'm not willing to put that much effort in. Maybe one day. To these scenarios while I still have to worry about the rest of the world. Yeah. Which is also why I want to cherry pick emails. Like we only did yeah. two emails on this. Mm-hmm. And like we're three hours. We've had a lot of derailing. Right. And I know that we, you know, we ordered food. So we're going to take a break. And I know that we have to come back and sit down and record because it's Thursday and it's not even four o'clock yet. We right. have Thursdays our record day. I would like to get at least two more episodes in. Mm -hmm. So like we have at least four to six more emails that we have to read on top of the new small content that we have to start creating, which will probably be done tomorrow because I'm not mentally there for that right now. Yeah, tomorrow. So before you keep going, I want to jump back to that point because you're just going to keep going further away from it. Oh. So we were just talking about how a wife is divulging the poll more than that. Same thing goes for a man. If you're telling more to Stacy at work than to your wife at home about your relationship with Stacy, that's a problem. And if you are recognizing that this relates to your life right now, you have one of two choices. You can either go home and water your relationship and figure out how to make it work, or you can set that person free. Yeah. Because at this point, you are prioritizing a friendship over your marriage when it comes to the issues in your marriage. I wanted to say that. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that it was necessary for you to be like, if you're a man talking to a woman. It is necessary because, because of the internet. In the comments, I, I absolutely know. get that. I personally don't think that's necessary. I don't agree. I mean, I because agree. Because if you have to go, well, what about them? You've already lost the argument. Right. You are deflecting the entire situation instead of going, okay, this applies to both men and women. Right. And you are not um, intellectually um, on the level. Yeah. I'm not willing to, to engage with you. Right. I, I, if, m- moving forward, I'm not. Like, yeah. I'm just not. If you ask me a question that if I say the scenario with a woman and a man and you go, well, what if it's a man and a woman? And the answer is yes, you're answering your own question. Right. Mm -hmm. That is logic. If one thing can apply to a single person, it can apply to everybody. Yep. And of course, there are external factors like disabilities and whatnot, but that falls into the same category. Yep. Yep. Is the food here yet? Nope. It has not even been picked up yet. I'm disgusted. I'm Oh, it's just been picked. Oh, no, it's approaching. Oh, thank God. I have to eat. (laughs) So with that being said, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. 
For those of you who enjoy our content and would like to support us and help grow the channel, the easiest way to do that is a super chat here on YouTube. For those of you who really, really like the content and would like to see more of it, check out our Patreon group. It gets exclusive content that will never be seen here on YouTube, early release stuff for those of you who are just as impatient as I am, as well as live streams with a live chat every Friday night. If you can't afford to do either one of those or you're just not into that, the next best thing that you can do is share this with people who you feel may vibe with it. No matter how you decide to support us, it's super dope and we thank you.